I call to order the Rosemont Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, April 25th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda this evening is the oath of office for the two um, new slash returning members. And Riley, we will have you administer that down front. Kurt, we welcome you to our Rosemont Planning Commission. Thanks for joining us. The next item on our agenda this evening is any additions to the agenda. Are there any additions to tonight's agenda? No, there are not, Madam Chair. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I skipped, I skipped over. We're not done with our first agenda item, which is the next step of our first agenda item is election of our chair and vice chair for the coming year. And so um, each year we elect a chair and vice chair um, and so at this time, we will open up for nominations for chair. I nominate Melissa Kenninger for chair. Second. Uh, okay, then motion to, oh. Are there any other nominations? Okay. All right. A motion to elect Ms. Melissa Kenninger by unanimous consent to the position of chairperson. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Reed and seconded by Commissioner Haber. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I am honored to serve as your chair for the coming year. At this time, we will also elect the vice chair. Are there any nominations for the vice chair? I will make a nomination to elect Commissioner Reed as vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations? I will make a motion to elect Commissioner Reed by unanimous consent to the position of vice chairperson. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenninger and seconded by Commissioner Haber. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Commissioner Reed will serve again as our vice chair. Thank you. Thank Please you. serve. Okay, moving on, we will skip additions to the agenda since we've done that already. The next item on our agenda is audience input. This section is for anyone in the audience who would like to bring something to the Planning Commission's attention that is not already on the agenda. Seeing none, we will move forward to the next item. The next item on our agenda this evening is the consent agenda, which is the approval of the March 20, 2023 regular meeting minutes. Are there any comments or questions on the consent agenda? Chair, I'll be abstaining because I was not present at the meeting. Thank you. Chair, I will also be abstaining because I was not present. Thank you. Any other comments or, or discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenniger, seconded by Commissioner Reed to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. 
brings us to the next agenda item this evening, which is our public hearing section. We have four items on the public hearing section this evening, and we will kick it off with Anthony with a request by Las Tortillas for a conditional use permit for additional outdoor seating slash dining area. Riley, where was this? It's right on the screen. Right there. Anthony, real I got it. Real quick before you start. Yes, for commissioners, Chair. as you're using your tablets this evening, the links on our agenda do not work, but there are three little lines to the in the kind of upper left area underneath the back arrow. If you click that, it will give you the table of contents, and you can then navigate to the packet items um, that way. If you hit a roadblock, just raise your hand, and Riley will help us. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request by the restaurant Las Tortillas for a permanent outdoor dining area for 11 or more seats. Uh, the applicant is requesting uh, permission for a permanent outdoor dining area on the north side of the building uh, facing the entrance of the restaurant. Um, since uh, the summer of 2020, uh, the applicant has been uh, utilizing a temporary patio that was approved um, towards the beginning of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, as a way to help mitigate some of the impacts of that. Uh, the proposed dining area would seat up to 40 people uh, in the uh, six uh, parking stalls closest to the front door of the restaurant. A uh, little context of the site here, it's located on the south side of County Road 42 in the western portion of the city. Shannon Parkway is probably the closest uh, cross street uh, to 42 with Creststone Avenue located just to the east of the Celtic Crossing Shopping Center. Uh, here's an aerial showing the setup that was out there uh, as of last summer. As you can see, there are six parking stalls here being occupied by uh, the tables uh, with some stanchions there to delineate uh, the dining area. So the applicant is proposing a permanent patio on, at, at grade uh, with a pergola type structure over the top of it um, with some plantings and hanging flowers uh, along the, the side facing closest the parking lot as a form of screening. Uh, the applicant did update their plans to include some co concrete planters here as a means of uh, vehicle uh, barriers uh, for safety. This was a request of the city's engineering uh, staff for that. Uh, additionally, the, the city staff did request the applicant reach out to their insurance company uh, to ensure that there were no additional requirements for their uh, coverage um, related to that purpose. Just a little better uh, angle here to give you an idea of the layout. Again, I said the, the applicant is proposing 40 uh, seats out there on the uh, proposed patio. Uh, with regards to parking, because the, the, the patio does uh, take up six parking stalls, a uh, little um, background on that. In uh, 2010, a variance was approved to allow for an increase to the amount of seating allowed on the site uh, of 20%. So that brought the total of seats permitted between the applicant's restaurant, the subway on the site, as well as Susie's Kitchen, uh, up to 261 for the overall uh, development. Um, so until the patio was in place, there were 173 seats um, being provided between those three restaurants, 60 of which are inside Las Tortillas restaurant. So with the um, patio, that reduces the number of seats permitted by reducing those parking stalls uh, to 239 seats for the overall parking or the overall shopping center. Uh, with the additional 40 seats provided by the permanent patio, that would bring the number of seats in the shopping center to 213. So still below what would be allowed based on the zoning with that approved variance. There are a few conditions that need to be met that staff is recommending. Uh, the applicant will need a building permit for the pergola structure due to its size, as well as an approval of an amendment to the applicant's liquor license. Uh, that was something that was waived during the COVID-19 pandemic um, uh, to help provide uh, opportunities for restaurants uh, to spread out their uh, seating. Um, again, the applicant shall provide a letter with their building permit application uh, from their insurance company. They did indicate uh, that they have reached out and no additional requirements 
are needed by their insurance company, uh, but as a, um, a surety that the staff is recommending a requirement that they provide some sort of letter. Um, the applicant should be providing a little bit more detail on the proposed plantings that they'll be putting out there, uh, as well as fencing uh, that does need to be installed on all sides of the patio um, so that the only access is provided via the principal structure. This is a requirement uh, not so much of the zoning ordinance or the conditional use permit, but more a uh, requirement of the uh, liquor license for that site. Um, and then lastly, no public address system, music, or TV shall be audible from a non-commercial or non-industrial use or district. Uh, just a little reminder of where the layout of the site is in relation to some residential uses. Uh, there are some townhomes here to the south of 151st Street West that would be the closest use. Um, they are beyond the uh, minimum required setbacks for an outdoor dining area um, at serving 11 uh, seats or more. So with that, staff can take any uh, uh, questions the commission might have. Um, I think the applicant may or a representative of the applicant may be here uh, to help answer some of the questions uh, staff is not able to, although I do believe um, it being dinner time, they might be at work. Thank you, Anthony. I just have one question, then I'll open it up to the commission. On the condition about no public address system should be audible, that doesn't mean that they couldn't have a speaker or a couple speakers for background, some light Correct. background music, as long as it's not auto audible from the non-commercial, non Correct, non correct. Okay. Yep, the closest being those townhomes to the south. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the commission? I, I, I had a similar question. Um, so how, how is that managed? I mean, if, if they do have music out there and it is audible, what, what happens? It's really a complaint-based yeah. system. So if we do get calls saying, hey, there's loud, you know, there's loud music playing out there, um, we would go out and, and observe either planning staff, but more likely police, um, since it would be out, outside of office hours. But it's really a complaint-based enforcement for that. So if one of the neighbors hears the sound, they would call the police, police would come out, and they would have it turned down or turned off? Yeah, yep, there'd be some sort of, we'd have some teeth for that. And what if, what the if it's a consistent code. problem? What's that? What if it's a consistent problem? Uh, well, that's a conditional use permit, so if it's a violation of one of their conditions, of their conditional use permit, they could, you know, have that revoked and they'll no longer have a patio. Okay. And so how, what, is, what is the procedure for that? How is it that, how is it that, that happens that consistent pattern revoked? What, what is, how does that play out? Well, there's, you know, I maybe would defer to our community development director. It's not very often that we actually have to uh, enforce any of the conditions on our conditional use permits, yep. um, but it could start with citations. It could also lead up to a, um, legal action in a, in a court setting. So, Ma Madam that. Chair, Commissioner Reed, so typically what you would see on a, um, a conditional use permit like this, if it's determined that there's a consistent or ongoing violation of their, their permit, as Anthony was running through here, so a complaint basis, so if staff receives um, a complaint, a number of complaints, um, as he said, likely would be the, the police that would observe and then they would make a, a documentation of that as part of a police report. Um, if it's a consistent or ongoing pattern, I think as you're suggesting, Commissioner Reed, then it could be brought um, back to the Planning Commission for a recommendation for revocation of the uh, conditional use. That's the most drastic. Um, typically we find if there are issues with a conditional use permit or with um, certain components of it, it can typically be mitigated through communication because that's kind of the last thing both the city and the business want to see happen is a revocation of something that they were granted approval to do. So. Um, as Anthony said, it is kind of the city's teeth to make sure that the conditions within this permit are, are followed. Um, by having it articulated in this permit, then it, it does have a, 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 the ability for the city to then enforce it. Okay. Thank you. Anthony, one other question I have for you. They've had the patio with COVID um, without this conditional use permit in some capacity not as formal as this would be. Have we received complaints from the patio operating out there the last couple of years? Madam Chair, we haven't received any complaints. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the commission? Yes, Commissioner Whitman. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, so kind of in line with the same questions we've heard on the um, uh, outdoor seating standard for the, for the um, public address system. So as I understand it, that's not only a condition of the permit, but that's actually a restatement of the outdoor seating 
law. Correct. Basically. Correct. Okay. Uh, staff um, will often include conditions of approval to memorialize or highlight uh, certain aspects of the code to make more clear to the applicant mostly of the understanding that, and expectations related to that. But yes, it is, it is a restatement of what is the city's code, city code's requirement. Got it. Thank you. And then, so would this use also be subject to the city's other noise standards, regulations? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Yes, I have a question on the fence itself. Um, mm -hmm. There is a fence requirement that I'm seeing here. Is there any requirement on the type of fence they'll put in? No, no, there's no requirement of what the fence actually needs to be constructed of, so long as it's continuous and uninterrupted. So it can even be a chain link fence? It could. Anthony, do you have any idea what the applicant is proposing to do for a fence? Well, prior to the um, uh, concrete vehicle barriers, planters, they had some sort of cable fence uh, going between the uh, posts of the pergola. I would assume it would be something similar to that okay. um, for the area between the patio and the building. I, I don't know what the applicant would um, propose for that, but I assume it would be something consistent with that. And it is a permanent fence, so it would be there in the winter then as well, is that correct? As long as they want the patio with their liquor license out there, they would have to have it completely enclosed. So okay. conceivably, if it's winter and they're not using that for outdoor service, they wouldn't have to have uh, fencing, Okay. you know, up there. Okay. I think I'm thinking like fireside fencing is permanent and they're your... Right. Carboni's is, is less. So. Is less permanent, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commission? I think I was going to mention, um, because they've done without the six parking stalls up to now, that's not an issue with any type of parking requirements for that? No, we, we haven't gotten any con complaints or, or concerns addressed to us. And as I said earlier, um, it is within the overall parking mm -hmm. for the site is within the code um, requirements with okay. the variance that they received. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Okay. This item is a public hearing item. So at this time, we will open up the public hearing. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item may do so at this time, coming to the podium, stating your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenniger, seconded by Commissioner Powell. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. And with that, we could move to a motion on this item. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Powell. Comment and then the motion. Um, I've observed this a number of times, their temporary setup. It's very popular with patrons. Doesn't seem to create any adverse concerns from a traffic flow standpoint. I may have been on the Planning Commission either when they got the variance for the shared parking with the other restaurants or their original construction, and uh, it's worked very well. Uh, there's rarely any parking that would extend up toward uh, the liquor store or uh, restaurant. So uh, I would make a motion to recommend the City Council approve a conditional use permit for the Las Tortillas restaurant allowing operation of an outdoor seating or dining area for 11 or more seats subject to the Six conditions noted in the staff memo. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Powell, seconded by Commissioner Reed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I will echo Commissioner Powell's statements. Um, I think this is a great addition and I'm excited to see it more permanent to their facility. With that, we will move on to the next item on our agenda this evening. which is a request by Fratelloni Burger for a small-scale mineral extraction permit for 2023. And I will turn that over to Anthony. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request for a new mineral extraction uh, operation in the eastern portion of the city uh, in the uh, intersection of 42 and Emory Avenue. This is within the uh, allowed area for mineral extraction uh, that's roughly one half mile um, within the vicinity of County Road 42. 
Um, the applicant is uh, proposing to mine the southern half of the site. Um, it's about 26 of the 79 acres. Um, you can see here on the aerial that there is a ridge line of trees here that the other mineral extraction operations have been following. So the mineral extraction will occur in the form of a cut into that, that ridge line. Um, a little closer view here showing uh, kind of the area on the southern portion of the site that would be mined um, if approved. It would, immediately west would be uh, the Bolander and Sons uh, mineral extraction uh, operation as well as Danner's and then further west is our newest uh, which is Max Steiniger um, their mineral extraction uh, closest to 52. The existing site uh, existing conditions here uh, can kind of even more clearly show that uh, uh, top topographical uh, difference between the northern portion and the southern portion uh, for orientation on the left side of this map is the north. So this here is actually County Road 42. Uh, elsewhere on the site, there is a, a utility easement uh, going um, diagonal from the northwest to the southeast of the northern half, as well as an existing irrigation uh, system. Uh, those would not be disturbed by the proposed mining uh, operation here. Uh, the applicant's site plan shows uh, the mining to occur in two phases, uh, the first phase being 15 acres uh, on the eastern portion of the mining area closest to Emory Avenue, and then a second phase of 11 acres on the western portion of that site. Uh, there's a temporary infiltration pond planned uh, kind of in the northeast, as well as uh, two uh, access points. Uh, the applicant is hoping for a primary access onto 42 with secondary onto Emory Avenue. Uh, staff uh, uh, is expecting that to be um, kind of uh, uh, declined or denied by the county. Um, therefore, uh, the city's engineering department did um, review this and uh, they are okay with Emory Avenue being the min uh, primary hall route uh, with the understanding that the applicant would not be able to utilize that for heavy truck traffic uh, while road restrictions are ongoing in the spring. Um, I think the applicant who's present can speak a little bit more about their conversations with the county here, but um, without this primary access, uh, staff is still supportive and recommends approval of the access onto Emory Avenue uh, going north to 42 for their haul route. Um, a condition of approval, of course, being that the county uh, pr uh, uh, provide a permit for that access there. The reclamation plan provided by the applicant does show a, a gradual grading of the site um, from south to north, following somewhat similar direction for the, the existing slope, although much flattened out. Uh, the, the reclamation plan does show a three to one uh, reclamation slope in these areas. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the conditions of approval include updating that to a four to one slope, which is uh, at the recommendation of the city's engineering staff. Um, there's a few standards, just wanted to let the, the commission know. Um, these are by far not uh, all of them, but extraction uh, must be five feet from a public utility easement, uh, must uh, be at least 30 feet of an adjoining property that's not being used for extraction and must also not be uh, within 50 feet of a right of way. The site plan provided by the applicant does meet all of those required setbacks. Uh, additionally, operations are limited to 15 acres in the first phase and mining in the second phase can't occur until 70% of that first phase area is reclaimed. Uh, all ex excavation operations can only be uh, conducted between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and all topsoil must be retained at the excavation site for that recl reclamation uh, once extraction is complete. Uh, so those are just a few of the standards that the city's code requires. Um, staff is uh, recommending approval with some conditions. These four conditions are in addition to the 31 conditions that are included in the draft um, mining permit or draft conditions for mineral extraction. Uh, those are just the updating of the reclamation plan for the slope, the permit from Dakota County if the, if the applicant is able to uh, uh, secure one, 
Uh, also some information reg regarding the stockpiles that aren't going to be used for any screening or diversion berms. Uh, and then also uh, of note, similar to the Max Steiniger permit, since we are halfway through the year, um, the applicant would have this permit valid until um, the end of 2024, uh, although a requirement being that they would provide staff with an update uh, of the material excavated and, and received for, um, for the site. So um, a mini review that doesn't require a full submittal and a uh, public hearing before the Planning Commission. And this is consistent with a recent approval for the Max Steiniger site, um, and staff is comfortable with that uh, standard being held for this applicant as well. So with that, I can take any questions. I do know that, in fact, the applicant is present for this item. So any, uh, any questions I'm not able to uh, respond to, I would defer to them. Thank you, Anthony. Are there comments or questions from the commission? Yes, Commissioner Powell. Uh, Anthony, the second condition, I'm pointing this out because it's a condition that's not Trunk Highway 42, that's County Road 42, correct? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Whitman. Um, Anthony, I'm looking at section E of the actual permit. Uh, which states that all required permits from the state of Minnesota, County of Dakota, and City of Rosemount or any of their agencies shall be obtained and submitted to the city prior to the issuance of the permit. Are there any other permits required by the city? There are no other permits required by the city for this. And then has the city received the re any required state or county permit? No, not at this time. Okay, so the this permit cannot be issued until the city has received those, right. those permits, is yep. that correct? Yeah, okay. any required. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions for Anthony? Okay. This item is also a public hearing item this evening, so at this time we will open up the public hearing for this item. Anyone that is in the audience would like to speak on this item may do so at this time, coming to the podium, stating your name and address for the record. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, the staff. My name is Scott Spizak. I represent Fratwell Companies. We are a 53-year-old family-owned, second-generation operated civil site construction firm. We're based in Little Canada. Uh, we provide civil site construction services to uh, a lot of businesses and general contractors in the area. You may be familiar with us uh, from recent projects we've done in Rosemount uh, for Lennar. We did the Talamar edition last year. Um, we've done work for Langer Construction at the Omni Winery and Tap Room, and we're currently uh, working with DEPCOM and Flint Hills constructing the 45 megawatt solar project at the refinery. Um, the proposed project and our request tonight is for you to approve uh, the project that's been submitted, um, including the reclamation plan. Um, the material that we would use is intended for use in our business. It's not intended to be an open to the sale public operation. So we would control the trucking and the equipment that it would be used in coming in and out of the site. Um, as uh, planner Nemchik mentioned, uh, we would construct a project in two phases, uh, phase one, and then once that's reclaimed up to 70%, we would move into phase two. Uh, we'd meet all requirements of the city. Uh, just a little detail on the access issue. When we um, first looked at this property, we assumed that we would be granted the same access that the other properties uh, that are mining had. Uh, once we started working uh, on the plan, uh, we contacted Dakota County and were told that uh, their new, new guidance is to limit uh, full movements, intersections to uh, one mile, I'm sorry, half mile, and uh, partial 
uh, movements to a quarter mile. So we would be limited on that western uh, location to right in and right out, uh, which for sending trucks to the Twin Cities would put us having to go to the intersection at Highway 55 and try and turn left against uh, traffic coming from Hastings. And so um, more than likely, as uh, Anthony mentioned, we, we will be using the Emory uh, access. Um, I think that's basically the points I want to make along with Myself tonight, we have Tony Fratalone, uh, owners of the company with us, and we have Brandon Peterson from our consultant, Carlson McCain, who would be able to answer any technical questions that you might have. If you have anything for me now. Thank you, Scott. I do not, do any of the commissioners have any questions for Scott or his team? Yes, Mr. Wyman. Thank you for your comments, that's helpful. Um, I guess just to follow up on my question that I asked Anthony, are there any state or county permits required for this? There would be a county permit if we can obtain one for access on the county 42, but uh, no state permits that we're aware of. There, there will be a um, uh, SWIP permit required we operate our mining operations under uh, MPCA's MNG 49 uh, general permit, uh, which applies specifically to mining operations. Uh, but it, it's very similar to an NPDES permit for construction operations. So, so those would be obtained and submitted to the city uh, along with there's other documents, insurance, uh, there's a bond required for reclamation. All those documents would be submitted once the uh, council approves subject to receiving those documents, then we would submit all that stuff before uh, staff would issue the final permit. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? I can come back up if you have some later. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Scott. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item this evening? Seeing none, I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenniger, seconded by Commissioner Powell. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. And with that, any other comments before we move to a motion? <coughs> Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to recommend the City Council approve the Fratalone Company's small-scale mineral extraction permit subject to the terms and conditions of the attached draft 2023 conditions for mineral extraction and subject to the four additional condi conditions noted in the staff memo. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Powell and seconded by Commissioner Reed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda this evening is a request by North 20 for an amendment to the conditional use permit to extend hours of operation and allow for outdoor live music. I will turn that over to Julia. All right, so this item tonight is amendment to the existing conditional use permit for North 20 Brewing. Uh, a little bit of a summary of the request. Uh, so the applicant is requesting an amendment to the existing conditional use permit that was approved back in June of 2020 uh, for North 20 Brewing to extend the hours of operation and to allow for outdoor live music and food trucks on site. Uh, the applicant is requesting to amend conditions three, which state hours of operation within the permit, and also condition 17, which states uh, that no outdoor live music or food trucks are allowed on site. Um, aside from the two conditions, the applicant is requesting to amend the remaining 15 conditions um, associated with the previously approved conditional use permit uh, would remain in effect and would also be required to be complied with as it has been since the approval in June of 2020. Did want to reiterate that uh, food trucks on site, or if this amendment is approved tonight, uh, or recommended for approval, food trucks on site would also need to adhere to the requirements of the mobile food units chapter in the city's code, and the site would also need to adhere to all those noise requirements that are found within the city's code as well. 
Uh, so a little aerial of the site. Um, so you can see it's located at 12266 Bacardi Avenue. So it is located about a mile north of Bonnier Path and also about a quarter of a mile south of 120th um, Street. Um, and uh, then also another aerial of the site. This was taken um, from September 2022 of the site. Um, also the next couple slides are photos of the site um, from the past week. Um, so here's looking on the site. The um, photo on the left is looking north on Bacardi Avenue. And then the photo on the top right is looking in northeast on the site at North 20. And then the bottom one is looking um, east um, at the existing building on site. Then a couple uh, panning around the area. Uh, so located on the left is you're looking northwest um, across the road from North 20. Middle one is looking directly west across from the site. And then the photo on the right is looking south on Bacardi Avenue. And then a couple more photos looking in at um, the existing um, brewery on site as well. Um, so here is um, the approved CUP conditions back um, that was approved back in 2020. So you can see highlighted in red what is being requested to be amended. So in condition three, the applicant is asking for hours to be extended Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, currently, they are allowed to um, be in operation from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. They're asking for Friday and Saturdays to be um, in operation from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Currently, um, they are allowed to be from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m on Fridays and then on Saturdays 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and then for Sunday hours they are requesting 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, that's a little bit more extended from the 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. that's currently um, in place and then also they are requesting um, the 17th condition to be um, not included anymore so there would be 16 conditions with this amendment to the conditional use permit. Um, so some public comments and police reports that we did receive. So the city did receive five public comment letters prior to tonight's meeting. Some concerns addressed in those were increase in noise, um, landscaping, parking on Bacardi Avenue, and also potential for additional smells with food trucks. Um, and then also um, there were three calls to the police department um, since the opening of North 20 Brewing, which was back in July of 2022. Two of those calls were in regards to parking on Bacardi Avenue, which parking on Bacardi Avenue is allowed, and then also one call um, for assistance with a guest at the brewery itself. Um, so recommended action today for the Planning Commission is to recommend the City Council approve an amendment to the existing conditional use permit for North 20 Brewing located at 12266 Bacardi Avenue to extend the hours of operation and to allow for outdoor live music and food trucks on site subject to conditions one, two, three, one through three, as you can find uh, within the staff memo. Um, but I can answer any additional questions right now um, that the commission has. Also did wanna mention that the applicant is here as well. Um, so if you do have additional questions that I cannot answer, they are here to speak on this item as well. Thanks, Julia. Yeah. I will start with a couple of questions yeah. and then open it up to the rest of the commissioners as well. Um, and some of these might be for the applicant, but do you know yeah. where on the site they plan to put the food trucks? Um, the applicant might be able to speak a little more to that. Um, the applicant did not say um, exactly where they would put it. Most likely would be in the parking area, most likely near, I'm guessing, where the patio is, but I would refer to the applicant more so where that location would be for sure. Okay, thank you. And with that, can you refresh, our, refresh us on the parking, what they have for parking there in, term, in terms of what is required versus what's currently there? I do not have that offhand, but I do know that they were able to, back in 2020 when this was approved, that they were able to meet the parking standards that was required for the site. It meets the parking standards, but yes. if, if we've got food trucks that are now gonna park in the parking lot and take up parking spots, then we could be potentially not meeting the standards any longer? Madam Chair, I'd defer to the applicant um, before we kind of dive into that piece okay. to understand where their, their proposal for those locations would be. That sounds good. Um, and can you talk a little bit about, you mentioned that any food trucks would be subject to the mobile food truck city code as well as the, um, any outdoor music to the noise ordinances. Can you talk a little bit about what the city code is for that? Yes, so I have it up on the screen currently. This These two portions 
are part of the mobile, the mobile food truck portion of the code. Um, so you can see 10.3 are those requirements. So, um, and also the location. So currently within the code, um, it does not specifically say that food trucks are allowed within the um, AG Agricultural Zoning District. Um, there was not a specific reason for that. Um, more so it was just left out. Um, so technically food trucks would not be allowed with that because it's not allowed in agricultural zoning districts, but it would still be under that purview um, that, um, as you can see in the code, that with the special events permit that is approved by the city, you are allowed to have up to four per year on site. So they would be able to have them on site with a special use permit with that until um, the code would be potentially changed to allow for food trucks in the AG agricultural zoning district. So when you say four permits in a calendar year, does that mean like four on four days or could a permit go for a month or two at a time? I do believe it's either a day or a weekend. It's, it is, um, it is our city clerk does the permitting for that. Um, I know that we have had appli or, uh, permits for a full weekend before. So, you know, depending on what the event is, if it's a couple day event, um, but it would be four special permits per year that could be approved by the city clerk. So it would, is it fair to think that they could have a food truck no more than four weekends out of the year? As of now, yes, with okay. how the code is currently written, correct. Okay. So it's not that they it would be able to be every weekend no, or every day? No, no, yes, okay. correct. Okay, and then what about the noise ordinance? So here's a couple portions of that noise. So again, with the outdoor patios and decks, kind of that was spoken to earlier with Las Tortillas, they would still have to um, adhere to what is stated on here, you know, um, would not be able to disturb the piece, um, you know, um, background music that does not disturb the piece, surrounding area permitted during hours when service of alcoholic beverages is permitted, so during the hours of operation, um, and then also, what is stated within the um, noisy parties or gathering as well. So I know there was a piece on the Las Tortillas that it couldn't be heard from the, the public, the PA and such, that would not be, um, that portion is not prevalent to this. It was public announcement, but also music yeah. I think was, was yeah. also in there. And it, yes, but the, at least the, that portion is, wasn't a condition within um, four microbreweries. So what, but does, if I'm reading D correctly, 715D, it means that the, the gathering can't be audible to the human ear 50 feet from the premise. Yes, and again, that's also would come down to, you know, we get a complaint, police would go out, um, they would listen, you know, take the report, kind of the same, what Anthony had stated with Las Tortillas, it would be that same um, purview with that. Okay, but can, you know, in terms of for the, the residents that are living there, they wouldn't have to have this. They would have an avenue if yes. if it was audible Correct. from their own backyard, which is a couple hundred feet away, Yes, that they could file a complaint. Yes, because that's still, even if it is amended to allow for that, they would still have to be required to meet those noise requirements that are in the code, which you can see in front of you right now. Okay. Mr. Reed. Madam yeah. Chair, if I can. So it is, this noise requirement as stringent as the one we heard for Las Tortillas. So if, if a reg resident <clears throat> hears music, call the police, and, and, and ultimately this could be revoked, is, is, this, is it that stringent? Um, so Madam Chair, Commissioner Reed, um, one of the, the little bit of the nuanced difference, I think what we heard from the last one for Las Tortillas because they're in a commercial zoning district, uh, I'm going by memory from the last staff report that had on there, um, the, uh, requirement that it could not be audible from a non-commercial or non-industrial district. What we're referencing here is the component of city code related to more of a nuisance violation that talks about audible of within 50 feet of the, the premise. So similar in interpretation and similar in impact to the actual code, but slightly different in that the Las Tortillas noise regulations were tied to the use as a commercial entity in a commercial zoning district where one could reasonably expect to have other noises associated with commercial activities. So that's where that one is talking about. It can't be audible from 
adjacent residential. This one is talking about it would be a violation if it's um, audible within 50 feet or whatever the, the, the specific language in the, in the code states. They're under more of a nuisance provision. Yeah, so it, it, in 50 feet, I mean, if I remember, there's, you know where I'm going here, right? There's, there's a residence across the street, right? And it's, it's more than 50 feet. And there's other residents around. So if, if they can hear the music, it would just make sure, play this out, right? So if they can hear the music, they would call. The, and, and police would come, they'd go to the house. If they could hear the music, they would go to the brewery and they would have to turn it off or down, correct? Right, it'd be more of a, a, a police enforcement action, not something necessarily tied to a specific requirement of their conditional use permit that allows them to operate. Okay, they, good, good. I'm pulling that thread a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep, so I, I see where you're going. A repeating mm -hmm. pattern. Mm -hmm. Perhaps again and again, can this be revoked? Can this, um, can, can their outdoor music um, approval be revoked? Yep, and, and that's a, a great question because that's a bit of the policy discussion that we would like the, the Planning Commission to have on there because if you take, if it's not a condition as it's noted within their conditional use permit that's basically being in violation of, it's a different avenue for the city to enforce. So it would, wouldn't necessarily be a revocation or enforcement of the conditional use permit, it'd be an enforcement of the city's noise or nuisance ordinance through um, uh, that, that, that component of city code. So if there's, I would, I would recommend that once you take input and feedback from the audience as a part of the public hearing process, if that is um, a, a large concern from those in attendance or based on the comments received, that could be an additional condition that the Planning Commission could leverage as a part of this uh, recommendation tonight. Yeah, thank you. Um, one, one other question, just another kind of clarification. The, the, the food trucks, can they park on Bacardi? Or do they need to park in the parking lot? The city's mobile food unit ordinance does not allow parking on public rights of way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So they would have to park within the property, yeah. Yeah. but um, customers or or anyone visiting neighboring residents there or anything, Bacardi does allow for on-street parking Correct. Of, <clears throat> of passenger vehicles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. I, yes, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, I just want to make something clear because I'm not I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if I agree with uh, the comment that the Las Tortillas noise standard does not apply here because when I read um, section 1141, agricultural district and conditional uses, when I look at what's allowed for microbreweries, it states that outdoor seating is subject to the performance standards outlined for outdoor seating in section 3114 of this code and subsection 11414D of this chapter. And when you go to 11414D, that includes the language 11414D subdivision seven, no public address system shall be audible from a non-commercial or non-industrial user district. So as I understand it, it will have the same, uh, the same standard. Again, it comes down to that, you know, the noise um, requirements as well. They'll have to um, adhere to what is required within the code. I, I understand that. I, I just I, I heard a question of was this the same standard, and I thought it was stated that this was not because it was in a commercial zone, but in the agricultural district, according to this, what's allowed for microbreweries, that commercial zone law applies to this use. Yes, um, I, and it's within the code, so that would apply. To okay. This. I, I, I guess my only other question on that then would be um, that I'm wondering why that would not be stated specifically as a condition within within the actual permit, just like it was uh, for Las Rotillas. They're just request they're requesting the two amendments that are stated in here. Um, um, like I have in addition to with the three additionals, the property will need to adhere to all noise requirements that are found within the city's code. So that is reiterated as a condition within, within that memo. So. Commissioner Witham, that was also a restatement of what's in the code in the recommended 
conditions for Las Tortillas, a restatement of what is currently in the code. It certainly could be added as a condition to further memorialize that section of the code if, if the commission desires. Uh, but, but that um, doesn't, its omission from a, a condition of approval does not mean that it doesn't apply I, because it's part of the code. I appreciate that. I liked what you said earlier though about just making it clear mm -hmm. to the permittee. And I think that was kind of Adam's suggestion too earlier was as we hear the feedback, we could add that back as a condition on the permit. So we could remove 16 as it's stated, but replace it with a condition yes. calling out the noise yep, ordinance. Correct. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, just another, another question. Um, does the city make any distinction between noise disturbances and live music, or is it all just sort of grouped together as noise and sound? Is grouped together um, per the city's code. Um, this portion of the code is under um, the police portion, which they kind of combine them with that, with the live music, um, speakers, all that um, is under that noise um, disturbance or you know disturbing the peace portion of the code. So, okay. I had a question too about the letter from the applicant, mm -hmm. where it said. Um, they want to be able to host live music at the brewery. That was just it. They didn't say outside. It just said to host live music is what the letter said. Yeah, and again, the applicant can speak a little bit more to that um, when I, with our discussion with the, um, with the applicant. It does sound like they are wanting to have that ability to have some outside music for that patio portion that's existing okay. at North 20. Because the, uh, the letter, I guess, didn't outstate. The and again, the applicant can speak a little bit more um, on what they're requesting with this amendment and what they're looking to. Sounds like the applicant is ready. To <laughs> so I have um, one other question. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Um, is there a limit to the number of food trucks that come on site at a time? Like, is it one or is it? Well, with the special events permit, um, they will have how many they want, and then that would be approved um, by the city clerk. Um, currently, I don't within there. Um, I do um. Madam, Madam Chair, as um, Julie is looking up that specific reference there, I think the, the point that staff is trying to make the distinction of is the applicant's request isn't specifically allowed in the current as it is written. So what staff is offering and providing some guidance on is a way for them to accomplish that. But it is in a very limited fashion as we noted through that special um, that special permit for that ins up to four instances per year. So it's a bit outside of this conversation in terms of other avenues for that to take place, but I think that's a good discussion that, that could uh, also occur here with input from the audience. If there's a desire at some point in the future for an amendment to city code that would more carefully refine or define that within this type of an area, that would be a, a different um, proposal that the city could consider. Do we know, when, kind of on that same thread that Commissioner Trigarjan was going on, do we, when the city clerk reviews these requests, is there a request, is there, like let's just say they wanted to have four food trucks for a weekend, and they're going to put them in their parking lot, which in, is going to then absorb a good share of their parking lot. But does she review that, she or he, review that and take that into consideration on you can't do that because you can't, in essence, get rid of 50% of your parking. Yeah, yes, Madam, Madam Chair, as a part of the special um, event permit, there's a number of different departments that would review that and provide input and feedback on there, everything okay. from you know, um, waste or are there, you know, what's the anticipated crowd size? So should there be a request to public works for additional trash containers? Other things that would typically be associated with a large temporary type of an event. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Julia. This item is a public hearing item, so at this time we will open up the public hearing. Anyone that would like to speak may do so, coming to the podium, stating your name and address for the record, and we will invite our applicant to step forward at this time first. Hi, my name is David Schmitz, um, 2100, 126th Street West in Rosemont. Um, the reason I was hesitating to, or starting to come up was hopefully we can clear up a bunch of what's going on here. Um, 
the requests we made were simply, um, we've had a lot of customers requesting these things, and I've had city, city people um, who work for the city tell me, go ahead and, and put this request in. Um, as far as food trucks, um, we're not, it's not really that big of a request from us. Um, we, when we first went about this process, we, um, we wanted to have food trucks because that's what a lot of breweries have, and the city said, no, you can't do that. So we put it in our own kitchen at a, at a, a very high cost, and so to have food trucks uh, would go against our, our kitchen. And so the only reason we'd ever have a food truck would be on some special occasion um, to celebrate you know, something that's going on with the city or something. Uh, so, you know, as, as, and, and I was told a couple months ago by someone who works with the city that we can do it four times a year, and I said, according to our conditional use permit, we cannot do it at all. Um, but now I find out differently that we can do it four times a year, and that would suffice fine with us. So we, don't, we do not need to include food trucks in, on this conversation. I, with your current conditional use permit, you would not be able to do it four times a year. Okay. You would need that removed, and then you would be able to do it four times a year. Okay, and to be honest, I'm not as concerned about food trucks. And I think in your question, Ms. Rivera, um, was about live music. Our request was simply, again, because a lot of patrons have asked us, in fact, people from the city have asked us if we could have live music in the building. Um, and that, that is our request in the building. We are not looking to do, we've had some patrons say, oh, this would be a really cool place to have a, a music festival out back. Um, not really looking to do that. Um, we're looking to, to have um, the ability to have live music in the building um, occasionally. And again, it's, um, I know when my wife and I used to go to breweries, we did not like it when it was so loud you could not talk to each other. And, and so it is not the vibe that we were going for where you would have such loud music that you couldn't talk with your neighbors. Um, our goal has always been at this brewery to build community and to have neighbors and people being able to talk to each other, and that, and that is still consistent. So we're not looking to add a bunch of noise. Um, and I have talked to some of the neighbors, and they said, you're requesting to get loud music out there. Absolutely not a requesting to get loud music out there. The biggest thing we are looking to do um, is from a, a, a time standpoint, we've had a lot of requests to open up earlier, like at 3 o'clock, that would be our biggest want. Um, there are times throughout the year on holidays and or um, vacations um, from you know, school breaks or stuff where it would be nice to open up earlier to allow customers to come out there uh, during the day. Um, you know, the, as far as going later, um, the hard part has been, you know, I, I've worked out there a lot and I, and I have a lot of uh, patrons saying, okay, now where are we gonna go? It's nine o'clock, what are we gonna do? Um, and I'm not sure that we as a staff even want to go later than 9 um, during the weekdays. In fact, on Sundays, even though we're allowed to stay open until 9, we stay open until 7. Um, because economically, it doesn't make any sense to stay open until 9 when hardly anyone's there. Um, sometimes on Friday and Saturday, I think during the summer, it would be nice to stay open another hour. Um, because people seem to like to stay out a little bit later on those nights. And rather than picking up and saying, okay, let's go find a different place to, to socialize, um, it'd be nice to say, yes, you can stay here uh, for another hour. Um, that would be the biggest request that we're looking for is, is to add some time. And not that we'd be open all that time. Um, we are not looking to be open um, from 11 to 11 um, all the time. We just want to have the ability to, if it makes economic sense, if it makes sense um, for people to, um, during a, a winter break or something, uh, to be out there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it, it, you know, it'd be nice to, to allow that. So that would be my comment. We're not, we're not trying to um, disturb the peace here. We just, we just want to be a good, good business for the city of Roswell. Okay. Thank you. you uh, any questions? Yeah, David, just a few if you could stay up. So the live music, if it's inside, you've got the large garage doors that open. And I believe if, even if it's inside, it's kind of considered outside at that point. I'm looking to Julia for confirmation. So that would be... Part of it, even though the music isn't situated outside, we need to do that so that they can have the live music indoors since it would be the indoor outdoor kind of lens together. Okay. So, um, just for clarity and why why that change is needed um, okay. for that. Do you, do you have concerns with the noise ordinance in the 50, like being able to hear the music 50 feet from the property then? Well, 50 feet's not very far, so I don't know if that's gonna affect you know people talking. 
Um, I know we have a neighbor who's across the street. I, I know one of the neighbors here who lives just up the road um, has told someone that I know that you know he, it has, he hasn't barely heard, heard anything. And he's, he's probably the second closest or third closest neighbor or so. Um, and he, um, the comment is that he barely hears it, you know, the brewery. But, you know, I, 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 obviously we're going to have people on the patio talking. I mean, 50 feet's not very far away. So I, I would certainly hope that this doesn't affect that. Right. Okay. Um, and then the food trucks, if you, if you were to have them, can you speak a little bit to where the location would be? If we them? were to have them, they would probably be right by the patio. Uh, you know, as, as close for customers to get to as possible. Okay, so would they be parked in existing parking spaces then? Yes. And do you know what your, like, how close you were to parking spaces from requirement to what uh, you have out there? We were okay We were okay with what we had, but we also asked for extended parking lot, which we are working on now. Um, okay. It got delayed because of road restrictions, um, but we are building an overflow parking lot. Um, it's been a little bit more popular than we thought. And I, and I know there's, you know, I know they said there was three calls to the, the police. One of those was, was me calling the police because I was concerned about a, a patron. So, okay. Um, and, but, and I know we've, and I, you know, I, I talked to one of the neighbors. I know there's been a couple days this spring where there has been parking on the road. Um, and we try to limit that as much as possible. Um, the, the overflow parking lot was not in a condition for cars to be in. Um, and we've we since have graded out some of the dirt and we're putting in gravel so that it'll be in a better condition depending on, you know, no matter what the weather is. Okay. So we so are working at, on, on rectifying that. So with that overflow parking, if the food truck took up three or four spots, that would be, oh, yeah. the overflow we're, would compensate for? We're adding way more than three to four spots, yeah. Those spots, okay. I don't know what the food truck takes up, I'm just yeah. kind of guessing. Okay, um, any other questions for the applicant from the commission at this time? No, thanks for the clar clarifying the, the music for me. Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Schmitz. Um, and, uh, and again, we can discuss this when we, we have our discussion as well, but I heard the 50 feet reference, and I, again, think that this, the requirement is more onerous than that for amplified music, and because the requirement is no public address system shall be audible from a non-commercial or non-industrial use. So the way I read that, it's at the property line. So you, it sounds to me like you're saying 50 feet, that's going to be tough. I, I would think that that's even tougher if you have live music that's amplified at the property line to be not heard. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, and as far as the music goes, again, we're not looking for anything that's loud. You know, and, and I, I, you know, I, I'm not even sure what, what is played at Bruce. I don't know if George can help me with this, but it's, you know, I asked my other son, he said acoustic music, you know, someone with a, a guitar sitting up in the corner playing um, is what we seem to be re requested. Not like a, you know, a rock band or anything like that. It's, it's, it's more, um, and again, our, my goal would not to have it be so loud that we couldn't have a conversation across the table. So. It's not, it sounds to me like it's not a concert venue you're, you're planning. You're not no. going to be charging, uh, you know, a cover charge or something like no. that. In fact, we had earlier this year trying to figure out how to draw people, and we had a, a guy who came in with music trivia, and he, he had the music, and I said, no, that's, that's too loud, and I, and I told him to shut it down. Um, and it, because it was, it, it was, I mean, I, I want people to be able to talk to each other. That's, that's why we're there. And, and then just on the, the food trucks, it sounds to me like you're content with um, the situation where you are allowed to have food trucks through a special event permit process maybe four times a year. That, yeah, that okay. would be, I mean, it's, it's direct competition with us. So, I mean, the only reason we do it is, is for a celebration to give people something different, um, you know, and, uh, and maybe our kitchen couldn't keep up with, you know, if we're gonna have a special day or something. Got it. And then final question, have you heard, I mean, we have some comments we've received from residents about noise, among some other things, but have you heard directly from residents uh, complaints about noise or any of these other issues? I have not. Okay. Um, the only thing I heard was what I said earlier was that um, one of the residents who's here tonight said that it, 
when he's outside, he doesn't, he barely hears it. Um, you know, and I've had, I can't tell you how many people, you know, I, I work up there a lot myself, and I, I, I can't tell you how many people who were opposed a couple years ago have come up and, and thanked us, um, and uh, almost on a daily basis, I have people saying, you know, thanks for sharing this view with us, um, and, and, and people really like being out there, and so it's, it's been rewarding from that standpoint. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Thank, Thank you. you. This time, anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item may do so at this time, coming to the podium, stating your name and address for the record. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Jeff Wilczek, W-I-L-C-Z-I-E-K. Got that right, Lee? <laughs> I live at uh, 12800 Bacardi Avenue West. It's approximately four blocks south of the brewery. The, COP, the new COP number 17 states, outdoor music or on-site food trucks are prohibited. Now they want to change that, so I'm wondering why the sudden change of heart? There must have been good reason that outdoor live music and on-site food trucks were a detriment, which uh, this has been addressed because apparently, Brenda brought it up, they were requesting live music, not outdoor live music, so I think that was added by the planner, I don't know. Um, the updated CUP reads at number five, will not involve uses, activities, etc., detrimental to any persons, property, or the general welfare, welfare because of excessive production of traffic, noise, etc. So how can this be accurate when the addition of food trucks and outdoor live music, well, apparently it's not gonna be outdoor live music, will definitely increase the production of, of excessive traffic and noise. Also, the updated CUP number six addresses vehicle ingress and egress to the property and will generate additional truck. It says that it will generate additional truck and vehicular traffic, but not at a capacity that would be substantially different than an active agricultural use. Are you kidding me? When was the last time you've seen nonstop traffic coming and going all day, every day, from a farmer's field. Most of the time, on peak weekend hours especially, there's parking on both sides of Bacardi, and Mr. Schmitz will attest to this. In the winter, I know they had uh, out, out uh, flow parking area plowed out during the winter, and they used that. And uh, despite that overflow parking and regular parking, we still had parking on Bacardi and uh, Julie uh, misinterpreted saying that there is parking allowed on Bacardi, but a part of their CUP is they're not allowed to have parking on Bacardi. So most of the music at breweries that my wife and I have visited just had a musician with a guitar in the corner playing mellow music. It sounds like that's what Dave just said they're gonna have. This, that would be nice, but uh, that's not what was in the information I had. Um, and then these breweries, if, if they did have music outside, it was located in an industrial park, not a residential area. And also the brewery is located right next to a wildlife, wildlife refuge. How is wildlife going to find any refuge next to a noisy high traffic area? So I felt that an environmental impact statement was in order to address this issue. And in closing, I want to say that my wife and I are patrons of North 20, and even, we're even Mug Club members from the start. But, what, but, that, but we feel that what they're requesting will disrupt the wildlife and the quiet rural atmosphere that we've enjoyed here for the last nearly 40 years. So I strongly urge the Planning Commission to take a closer look at this request before seeking approval from the City Council. 
Thank you. Is there any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Debbie Rupi. And I understand that we are here tonight to discuss a conditional use permit for North 20 Brewery. They would like to extend their hours, and what I received in our letter was that they wanted outdoor live music. So some of this is based on that, but still applies. When the brewery was first approved back in 2020, it was decided that the brewery would be open Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., Friday 4 to 10, Saturday 11.30 to 10, and Sunday 11.30 to 7. The patio would close at 9, and there would be no parking along Bacardi Avenue, no food trucks, and no live music. The brewery has already broken some of these rules by extending hours on holidays and allowing cars to park on the road. This is a rural residential area with a wildlife preserve next door. Since the brewery opened, we have, been, we have seen an increase in foot traffic, cars, trucks, bikes, and motorcycles along Bacardi. The road is becoming more of a hazard every day. You see kids, you see cars, alcohol in cars and kids don't mix. And now by extending the hours, you're creating more of a risk for everybody. Noise also travels further in rural areas. Bacardi Avenue is not a paved road and does not have any street lights. While the speed limit is 50 miles per hour, it is not posted. The city said they were planning on conducting a speed study in the area in 2021. The Planning Commission, and I don't know how many of you were on that at the time, also strongly recommended this. Does anyone know if there was a traffic study done back in 2021? Because okay. I know that that was something they wanted to look at for further uh, issues with the brewery. Okay, so maybe something should be done. I, I would like that to happen if possible. We were told at those city council meetings back in 2020 that a buffer would be placed to help with the noise and protect the wildlife. Our well water would not be affected, but actually our well water has. Plus, the road would be maintained better to prevent the dust. Since then, nothing has been dealt with, yet we continue to deal with the noise, traffic, and dust. To top it off, many people who go to the brewery walk their dogs, and they let their dogs loose. So Bacardi has pretty much become a dog park. I have dogs running in my yard all the time that are loose from people walking up and down to go to the brewery. According to the City of Rosemount website, conditional use permits may be issued if, number one, will not be detrimental or to endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the neighborhood or the city. Number two, will be harmonious with the objectives of the comprehensive plan and city code provisions. Number three, will be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained so as to be compatible or similar in an architectural and landscape appearance with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity. It will not change the essential character of that area, nor diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. Well, I've talked to some people about our home before, and they said, you know, we really like your home, but now you have a brewery down the street. Who would want that? So that, that's a concern, too. Number four. Uh, will be served adequately by existing or those proposed in the project essential public facilities and services, including streets, police, and fire protection, drainage structures, disposal, water, and sewer systems and schools. Number five, will not involve uses, activities, material equipment, and conditions of operation that will be hazardous or detrimental to any persons or property or the general welfare because of excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glares, or odors. Number six, we'll have vehicular ingress and egress to the property, which does not create traffic congestion or interfere with traffic on surrounding public streets. On a side note, 120th, which is north of the brewery, is a narrow road with two very dangerous curves coming around. So many times I see people walking around both of those corners and they're going to and from the brewery with their loose dogs or their dogs. It really creates a traffic issue and I'm really worried one of these days it's not going to go over well. Many times we've seen people in the ditch on this road as well. Number seven, will not result in the destruction, loss, or damage of a natural, scenic, or historic feature of major importance and will comply with all local, state, and federal environmental quality standards. 
Number eight, these standards in addition to specific conditions as they may be applied throughout the code. Every nice day when people visit the brewery and they are outside, we hear the noise. We can go in our backyard, we do hear the noise from the brewery. We also see the traffic, we hear the people walk by, we find trash in our yard, we find all kinds of things going on that we did not find before. We also see the traffic and watch the dust pile up in our home. Where is our right to privacy? Where is our right to the quality of life? This brewery is already affecting the quality of life in this area and disrupting the wildlife. Extending the hours and having outdoor live music or food trucks will be a further public nuisance, affecting not only the quality of life of people and animals, but also causing noise pollution issue as well, which the state of Minnesota does have restrictions on noise pollution. According to a statute, a nuisance is anything injurious to health, indecent or offensive to the senses, or, or obstructs the free use and comfortable use of life or property by allowing the conditional use permit, the extended hours, live music, and perhaps food trucks would do just that. So I thank you for your consideration in, all, in this matter. And one other question for all of you is, did you receive the letter from Ina Wickland? Have you had a chance to read that letter? Mm -hmm. Yes, we chance? did receive mm -hmm. it. Okay, just wanted to make sure. She's not here tonight, but I wanted to make sure to address that. So thank you very yes. much. Thank Debbie, you. I, Debbie, I didn't catch your address. Can I? I'm yes. sorry. Yes, yeah. 12050 Bacardi, 12,050. Thank you. Not very far from the brewery. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I uh, appreciate everybody here, and I appreciate Dave bringing it to the public so we could talk about it. Sir, if I get you to state your name and yes. address for the record. Okay. Thank my, you. My name is Fred Rupi. I live at 12,050 Bacardi Avenue Thank you. in Rosemont West. Is Julia, could you put the site plan up just for one second where it's laid out, just so I can just get to that site, just kind of give you an idea where where we live, which... Does this look good? Yeah, uh, that'll work. Uh, no, no, just so I can see my part. That's not my problem. Uh, one more, a couple back. Well, yeah, there we go. I'm in the top corner. You can see 12,050 right there. We've lived there. We bought the property in 2012. We thought this would be a great place to raise our kids. You know, rural, residential rural, okay? This is residential rural, not this agricultural thing because I have limitations there. If I was in agriculture, I could build whatever I wanted. I can't, I have limitations, okay? And what I found, you know, since I met Dave, I have to appreciate him some ways because some of my neighbors are closer to me now than I ever before because they knew we had to bond together to be able to understand this problem. And we really felt discouraged when the city council passed it last time because it affects our lives. We live there. And like my wife said earlier, the noise is noisy. I'm 750 feet away and I can clearly hear it. If I wanna shut it off, I can, but you know what? I work a lot of hours and I come home and I wanna relax. And every time they have big crowds, that's when I wanna relax. You can't go in my backyard without hearing the, the noise. And if they're gonna amplify it to music, that means they're gonna ask for more people coming in. I'd like to know how many seats they have in their back patio, because I always look at that. I understand the seating. Las Tortilla had 40 seats outside. How many do you have back there, Dave? I'm sure you have more than 40. You probably have 120. Just 100. 100, 100 seats. Now, if you amplified 100 seats at Las Tortilla there, do you think the neighbors might say something? It's a lot of people, plus the people standing. It's loud, and the thing is, if you look at Dave's property, his patio is on my side. He has no buffer in between there except the woods, which is the preserve, and it amplifies. It's in the rural area, so I can clearly hear it. I'm not saying Dave's a bad guy because I, I, I appreciate small business. The problem is I bought this property so I can enjoy it, spend time with my family and kids, but now it's every weekend, every evening that you or people want, they're gonna be there, and they, you can hear it and we can loudly hear it. And if you're saying, if we can put in the ordinance, if I can hear it, I'm 750 feet. I can, I can even make out some of the words, but it's like chatter. There's, you know, when you get a big crowd, they're talking over each other. They're always talking over, and you put music on the side, they have to talk over that. It really echoes. I and me are close friends now because of this, and I love what she's doing with the preserve. I think it's excellent because it, it preserves what was there, and with this, I, I have no problem, Dave, doing it, but buffer the noise. I don't want it going in the preserve. I don't want it going to my house. Put big hedges up. 
I mean, at the uh, Pulte down in Egan, right there on the corner, they had to put a berm up, they had to put a fence up because of the gun club. They couldn't put those houses. They didn't have to do anything. The city allowed it. Now, I, I was here at that meeting, I said, I, I need to take care of the noise, and I need to take care of the traffic. And none of that has been addressed. And it's like, I feel that I'm not being, you know, that's why I'm talking here in public, so that people know, I don't like to be up here. I don't want to spend the time doing this. You know, I want to be able to live comfortably and be able to have small groups. Dave's asking for 100 people just out on this patio. Minimum, how about the people inside? That's a big crowd. What if I did that to my house every day and put 150, 200 people at my property? You think my neighbors would appreciate it? Every weekend that's nice and sunny. I mean, when we had the nice weather, 80 degrees, I could hear it loud and clear those people. It was just like chatter, like you're going to the Rosemont football game. You could hear it. It was not as loud as, but I could hear it loud and clear. I could, I could make people out. So all I'm trying to say to you is the noise. I'm very concerned about the noise. I asked for them to do a noise test on it. Never seen that. Never ha had happened. But there, there, it is a problem for resident. This is residential area. I get it. The breweries, they're important. They help bring people together. But this is next to a wildlife preserve. It's next to my home that I invested a lot of money in. I don't really want to leave all the time because it's noisy and say, let's go somewhere else because it's noisy. I want to sit back, write a book, read a book. I can't do that when there's a lot of people. It doesn't feel like the same. So all I'm saying is take a little empathy and think about people that have to live there. And you think about if you had a brewery within 750 feet of your house, how would you feel when you want raise your kids? I work a lot of hours. You won't find a lot of people that will work as hard as I do. And I'm not trying to say it in a negative way. I'm just saying I have to to support my family and everything. I don't have it easy, but I want to come home and I want to relax. I don't want to come home and hear the chatter of people or have to dodge traffic when I'm walking my dogs. And I've always walked my dogs on that road. And Dave's seen me when he was gun hunting there, when he was shooting guns. He was shooting guns when I was there, so he, does, he knows that I'm there. I walked the dogs. And it made one of my dogs gun shy because it was, was within 50 feet, but I'm not trying to blame him for that. That's my fault for being there at the wrong time, but I'm asking him. Think of the people that are around there, especially Ina. You know, she's still alive, and I hope she lives another 50 years or so. But I, she's a very nice lady. She, she did a lot for the city to help them. And that preserve is, is one of the things that should be here for another 50, 100 years and not try to, t because that's noise related. Put, put some buffers in there, put some berms, put some big evergreens in there, put something that it kind of buffers it. I respect what you're doing, but I think for right now, until there's the buffers in there, and if I can hear it within my home, 750 feet away, because I can hear it, there's a channel there, and I'm, if you're asking the city if I, if I have to call the police for it each time to start a precedent, that's what I should do. I don't want to do that. I have not done it yet, Dave. I've never called anybody because you know what? I respect you. I respect you. I want you to be able to have a business. But look at us, too, as individuals. And just like Omni, they're from Maple Grove. They came down here to have the business. You can do the same thing. You can always move a bigger venue somewhere else, too. You know, eventually, you can have a second site. You can have a third site. You can have a fourth site. So there's opportunity for them. I don't think you have a bad system. I just think the location definitely affects me and my family. And I'm not going to speak for the rest of the people, but I do have a lot of people in the neighborhood that think the same, but they just don't want to speak about it because it's something to put, you know, put out there that they don't want to. And, and I get that. And I respect them for that. But I want to tell you, thank you, but please consider you know, our thoughts, too, that we want a life, too. And I think adding more music, adding more hours. I walk the dogs after at night. I walk them at midnight, you know, 11 o'clock after you're done. If you guys ever see me walking, I walk them after those hours. I walk them in the morning early. I enjoy that. It helps me. It helps me unwind. But I used to do it earlier in the day and stuff like I can't because of traffic. A lot of people drive that very fast. And one of our people in our group said, we asked Mayor, Mayor Drosty, put a 30 mile limit in there because that would help. People are flying right through that road. And if not, they're on their Google Maps trying to figure out where stuff is if they're newcomers to the area. So we've got to do something better on that road because it has a commercial property on it now. And we have to do something better. It's not residential road like it was. There's a commercial property on it. And it should have never been there in some ways because it affects the neighborhood and just the dynamics of it and the wildlife preserve. So I appreciate your time and thank you. But I, I wanted to strongly tell you that I do object for the additional time and the food trucks and that. But I want him to be successful, but if he can contain it to his property without affecting the neighborhood and doing that, 
you know, I understand that, you know, so, but thank you, so, okay. Thank you. Yep. Good evening, my name is, excuse me, Mara Schottenbauer, and I live straight across the road at 12483 Bacardi Avenue West. Um, I'm not gonna speak a ton about the sound because I will give you guys a little bit of information you may not be aware of. Our area is very geographically uh, diverse for a farm field. Our property is actually higher than the, um, the brewery, um, but all the other uh, folks that do hear that noise, their property is down in a valley with the brewery. So it echoes quite a bit for that side of the road. Uh, everybody else probably can hear me screaming at my kids seven times a day at least, especially in the summertime. Um, so we don't have a huge sound impact being slightly above. We can hear people in the, uh, in the parking lot, that's about it. Um, but of course we do have a big impact with the traffic and that's my uh, big concern. Um, I don't know if you, it didn't show it on the more recent photos, but uh, Dave and his family are working, as he said, to uh, have some overflow parking. Uh, hopefully that will abate the road parking. Um, yes, in the, in the CP, or excuse me, the original cup, it said no, um, no parking for uh, resident, I'm sorry, within the residential neighborhood there for the, for the brewery. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping that that is something that we don't have any issues with in the future. Um, but also in the original um, uh, original cup was um, statements of signage, that that might be something that needs to be pursued. Um, and I think that that is uh, something that we definitely need to do. Again, similar to uh, out there residents here, you know, we had the assumption that it would be outdoor music and um, maybe, maybe more along the lines of kind of a small concert. Um, you know, right now on good, you know, Nice weekends, it fills their parking lot, fills the side of the road, fills the ditches and the right of way in the road. Um, and uh, we've got lots of cars turning around in our parking lot um, for whatever reason. They, oh yeah, we gotta go north, not south when they're leaving the uh, establishment. Um, I have four young, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I have four young boys. Um, and they are, they're, boys and I'll tell them a hundred times to be careful of that road but it is obviously a concern um, and I know that it would not be possible but I would love it if we could say you can't drive between like if we could do two separate entrances and they come from the north and enter the north entrance and then they come to the south and they enter the south entrance but um, just something that uh, that further controls the traffic um, controls the parking uh, we have, again, just living across the road, we do have um, the added concern of glare of headlights. Uh, they did put some plantings in along their existing parking lot, um, and I'm going to assume, but maybe something that needs to be added conditional, that, that is extended. Um, again, in one of the pictures, you can see the plantings, they're this high. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if that uh, needs to be further addressed in terms of actually blocking glare. Um, my concerns with the hours are uh, that you know we, we do have the headlights shining in our bedrooms and bathrooms and dining room um, at fairly late evenings uh, and extensions of that would uh, would further extend that glare um, shining into those those rooms um, I did uh, I did go and, and compile I'm guess saying uh, other people did you know I have copies if you care but I, I looked around at a comparable uh, businesses um, and comparable events again this was back assuming that there'd be live outdoor music, um, but uh, there are many establishments similar. Omni has music um, every Wednesday. Uh, City of Rosemount has live music um, in, the, in the summer uh, about uh, every few weeks on Thursdays. There's a brewery in, um, in uh, New Prague also, and uh, these different businesses, uh, they have hours similar to what uh, North 20 already has. Um, their hours are from around 3 on weekdays um, and then they shut down at, uh, at the uh, 9, 10, 9, um, 9 p.m. time frame for the weekdays. Again, typical, not, not across the board. Um, and then um, 
uh, for weekends, they have that, that 10 o'clock closing time. Now, um, you know, with those, with the, the food truck concern and the, um, and the, uh, that being limited to four times a year, that's, that's a big relief. Um, if that's something that goes forth, you know, uh, the amount of traffic that we see there would be, and we see this again, any, any nice summer day in the summertime, it would be something that you would expect in a, in a residential neighborhood like we have, even though it's not zoned that way, it is a residential neighborhood. And, uh, you know, if a, if a family was to host, a, host an outdoor wedding once in 30 years, okay, there's that kind of traffic. And we see that, you know, uh, many, many, many times. So um, further, further action um, on, on monitoring, and I, I said this back when they made their application, you know, it's not their job to keep us safe. It's their job to, of course, control the impact on our neighborhood, but it's the city's job to keep us safe from the traffic that they have uh, allowed through having a business here. And so that's what I would like to see is further action from the city in terms of, as we've said, maybe a, a speed study, um, any other, if a sound study is necessary, I don't know. Um, but uh, those concerns and, and these, these other um, change of hours, again, it, it, they're not asking for much, but it's enough in, an, in a re residential zone that it could have a big impact. Excuse me. And, uh, and all these other businesses, uh, aside from Omni that I looked up, they've been in business for years, and, and they're making a profit. They're just as successful. Um, so uh, I, I think that, um, you know, that the city could make um, further recommendations or conditions. Uh, even with the music, you know, whether it falls in or outdoor, indoor, with the garage doors up or not, um, with these other establishments, they have a time frame. They have to be done by 8 p.m. There's nothing that I saw in the current um, conditional use permit that mentioned a time frame. It's just, well, if it's noisy. Um, so I think that if that's something that uh, uh, could further um, handle some of that sound management expectation, um, and we don't, again, we don't know necessarily how often that would happen, so I think that's a big concern for uh, the neighborhood. Um, you know, everybody likes a, a fun sing-along once in a while, maybe not every weekend. So those are my concerns. Um, I appreciate your time. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be over there. Thank you. Or anyone else in the audience would like to speak on this item this evening? Hi, my name is Joe Casella and I live at 4962 Sycamore, Egan officially, but my backyard is 120th Street in Bacardi. And um, you know, how on earth did we get here so fast? How long has this brewery been open? A year or so? And during the time when they were talking to us and talking about the brewery, they had the set hours and they had everything laid out. And here we are just a little bit over a year and they want to change everything? Holy mackerel, we're just getting used to them. So we're, t I, I don't understand how, uh, uh, what the justification is to make those major changes. Is it the fact that somebody's sitting at your bar and doesn't have another place to go? Come on, guys. That's ridiculous. We're moving too fast. It, 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 it needs to be slowed down and, and uh, continue as it is now and then make a determination later. There's no need to jump to any conclusions. And as far as parking on Bacardi, is it or is it not illegal to park on Bacardi? Who can answer that question? Because I've heard different, uh, different sides of the story. But you know what? That's not really, that's not the issue here. The issue is safety. People walking up and down that street in a gauntlet with cars parked on both sides with their dogs and their kids and people are pulling out of that place with alcohol in their system. That's the issue. So I, I'm totally against the hours. The traffic that comes around my corner at 120th and Bacardi is absolutely increased. If they, the cars have been in my yard and people are drunk. 
And I've been one of the guys that calls the Rosemount police on a regular basis, and I'll continue to do so. They have not kept up their end of the bargain with the parking and some of the other things. That's all I have. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item this evening? You're just I'm Richard Erdrich, and I live at 12420 Bacardi Avenue. I'm going on my 54th year there, by the way. Bacardi was not a road when I came out here. My driveway was a half mile long, and I had no problem with that. Get my right tractor out there, an old farm boy. I can move that snow. I can drive through that mud. Not a problem. So I was kind of surprised when this thing came up. Uh, uh, not having been really close with the neighbors around my place because of working long hours, traveling, I never really got a chance to meet some of them. Some of them I did. But when this came up, uh, I thought, well, can it hurt? Well, it turns out that, yeah, it does hurt. And there was some talk about property values earlier, and I think you'll all agree, from a cursory viewpoint, yeah, it's going to hurt. It can't help. So that's number one, you know, that you have to consider when you, when you take a piece of property like this, agricultural, and you run a commercial entity into it and hope that everything works out right. Now, I've got some questions for you folks, too. I didn't hear anything about this, this brewery until 10 days before the first city council meeting. As an adjacent property owner, I didn't know anything about this thing for years, apparently. Or maybe I would have done something to either help them or hurt them, one or the other. I don't know. I'll never have that chance. But there's lots of questions, you know. I think if I ask the crowd here to give me some questions, a list of questions that need to be answered, I'd get a, I'd get a page full of of really good questions. For instance, how deep is the well? Is here legal legal? I don't have that answer and I believe we will take questions and respond to them at the end of the public hearing. Okay, the question I would ask is, does anybody have that answer? I mean, anybody that's here. I don't know what's going to happen as a result of this thing. I mean, this is, this is like being a little pregnant, you know? Been there, done that, all right. Uh, <clears throat> but there are certain, certain things that have to be done, I think, with, a, with some good reason for public safety. I mean, there's all the time we hear words from politicians about doing something for public safety. Well, all these examples of people going on Bacardi Avenue uh, I'm sure that the folks at, in the brewery didn't plan on parking people in the street. That didn't happen. But I've been in their place. It's a very nice place, okay? And so I can understand why they have a pretty good business. The question is, how, how do you fix it to the point where it's, it can, it's acceptable by the people that have to live there every day and have to sleep there every night? By the way, I'm 400 feet from the building, and after having spent some of my time in life hanging onto a guitar and playing in front of a Marshall stack, I'll tell you right now that you're going to hear that music uh, way more than 50 feet if it's, if it's live music amplified, okay? So this is a tough problem. I, don't, I do not envy your job. And, and I don't want to hurt the folks who are trying to make a living. And they're my neighbors, okay. And yet I, got, I, I want the folks that are on Bacardi and, and even up 126th and even the folks down in, in Egan on 120th, you know, uh, to be able to try and get some kind of, of agreement that, that everybody hates. 
because you know how that goes. Everybody hates it, it must be good. Everybody likes it, it's probably crooked. So, so there we go, that's about all. I was gonna ask you one more thing. Uh, in conversion from agricultural property to commercial, is this indeed a commercial zoned property? Anybody know? Sir, we'll answer um, all the questions and all the comments that have come up. We'll address them at the close of the public hearing. So I'll document your question and we will answer that. at, at say, the that say that again, please, slower. Yep, sure. So we, I have been documenting all the comments and questions throughout the public hearing. Right. And then we will, at the close of, after we close the public hearing, then we go back and we address all the questions okay. and comments. Okay, so, so you I, have that question noted. Yep. Okay. With that, I will bid adieu. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is uh, Mike McMenemy, and we farm at, I think it's 12380 Bonnier Path. Uh, and up until two weeks ago, we owned that beautiful piece of property, right, to the east of the, the brewery there, the 70 acres that now is no longer ours, it is yours, and we're so proud of that. Um, we've been in the area a long time between Dick Erdrich and Ida. Dick is on one side of the brewery. Ida has a wildlife area on the other. They've been in the area for over 100 years. Ida's wildlife preserve is something that I think we can all be so proud of. Her whole life has been that piece of property, preserving it for the animals, and now it's part of, the, of a city, city park. Ida is not here today because she is totally devastated. She could not be here today. I'm here today, I passed out the different sheet. You can see her comments there. So it is an overwhelming issue with her. Um, I'm not sure how many of you were uh, on the Zoom uh, for the brewery to begin with. I'm not sure how many comments came across, probably 30 or 40. I think there was one, maybe two for it. Now the Smiths are wonderful people and they're running a very good organization there. So indeed, they've changed the thoughts and minds of some people. But really, it was, uh, did not belong to begin with. It is there, it is there. And we want them to be successful. And they're very successful with what they have now, what they wanted. You gave it to them, you can go by there. Their parking lot is full on weekends. Uh, they need no more. I think they should be content, at least at this time, with what they have. A big concern is if you give them more, what is to prevent them to sell it to somebody who is not as responsible as they are? Because they are responsible people. That's the big concern. So I would encourage you people to back off on all their recommendations, go with what they said they wanted and needed to have a successful business. They have that. They have that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item this evening? Seeing that, I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenniger and seconded by Commissioner Reed to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. Uh, Julie, I've got, I've got a list of a couple things, well, more than a couple things, and hopefully I will um, capture them all. I want to start with the parking. So Bacardi does allow parking. However, as part of their conditional use permit, the brewery is not allowed to have patrons park on Bacardi. Yes, the road itself on other portions is allowed to be parked on, but with their conditional use permit, you can see the conditions currently. Um, so condition it's condition nine. nine. It's condition nine. Nine, and then it also yeah. states condition 10 that the city could sign Bacardi. It, it could, yes. For no parking if necessary. So it sounds yes. like we do have, which, which to some extent, some of their requests tonight could increase. Um, increased patrons going there, but as a whole, really the, the parking isn't, a, isn't one of the items we're t that we're considering in their request for changes tonight, but 
it sounds like there's issues with parking. So they're building the overflow lot, um, which hopefully will avoid the parking on Bacardi, but is if they do continue to have parking on Bacardi, what are the next steps from a city perspective? I might refer to our community development director okay. on that. And I know they're, it's the patrons parking there, but the patrons don't know they can't park there. And the brewery has limited abilities to say, where did you park tonight, you know, um, as well. What, so, M Madam Chair, understanding your, your, your question, it's about the, when do some of these conditions <clears throat> within their conditional use permit trigger, essentially? Yeah, yeah, like condition 10, that the city could sign Bacardi Avenue for no parking. So we've heard tonight that, there's, that there is parking being occurring on Bacardi that is not the residents having guests to their homes parking there, but it's patrons for the brewery, which is not allowed. Right, so the discussion tonight, we can look at it kind of two different ways. You have the request that's before the Planning Commission for an amendment to their conditional use permit as we, you know, Julie went through in, in great detail. So this, I would consider this kind of a secondary question about then the enforceability or reinterpretation or amendment to other conditions within their conditional use permit. Um, so, you know, looking at the way it's written there, it's more of a discretionary item by the city if it's perceived or realized to be a, a in, an issue. Typically, we would refer to our police department as they're the ones that would actively monitor and document any types of calls or issues that would occur out there. Um, of course, other ways that we receive those complaints are through citizen feedback or citizen complaints that are received and logged by the city. Um, that information is shared across departments and then a, a decision or recommendation would be made internally by staff to move ahead with a, a change that could be implemented through their conditional use permit. Okay. So if, obviously at some point, hopefully in the near future, the overflow lot will be, will be built. And I get that this is outside of their request today, but it's feedback we're hearing from, mm -hmm. from the residents. So I do, wanna, I, I do wanna address some of these feedback, mm -hmm. the feedback we're receiving. Um, if I could just clarify, if yeah. I could. I mean, so is that actionable now, or if, if the residents feel it is, they, it should be acted upon, do they need to start calling the police department to get that acted upon? What, what triggers that it, to make it happen? It could be all of the above, Commissioner Reed. Um, so I think the, the part of what we're hearing this evening as part of this public hearing, while some of those comments may not directly impact or reflect that condition in there, this, mm -hmm. these are public comments that are being received that are now on, on record and will be taken into consideration by um, whether police or other, other staff that would move forward to make that recommendation to um, ultimately change if it would be signage for restriction of parking on Bacardi. So, so this, this is a part of it right, right now. And then in the, in the future, um, if there is parking on Bacardi, the, which I, I know does not sound normal, um, but the, the course of action would be for residents if they see that to call the police department and report it and then the police will come out and observe it and make the re report back to the city. And to our understanding in correspondence with our police chief, those were the two other calls that they received and had responded to were um, parking uh, along Bacardi. Um, so those are the two documented instances that we, we currently have that were um, worked into this presentation this evening. Okay. Um, so that would be the course for residents to continue to, to do that. and. And with the comments here tonight, it will go back to the city for further review. Correct. And I would think that at, with the overflow lot being put in, that that hopefully will alleviate <clears throat> that. But if it's not, we've got course of action. Yeah, uh, and some maybe a little bit more of the history. I know there's been a lot of public feedback from the, the very beginning of this, this project. Um, so I, I think the Again, the, the receiving of the comments from the public, both written and then uh, through the, the testimony here this, this evening, all weigh into the, the ultimate changes or decisions or enforcement of the other existing conditions within their permit. And Madam I, Chair. Yeah. Yeah, just to clarify with that, because my understanding of it is this is a request for an amended CUP. Now they have some specific revisions that they're suggesting, but we're looking at the whole. We're looking at the whole CUP you know, whether this should be approved or not. And parking is part of that amended CUP. Um, and so I think it is appropriate to uh, take a look at those conditions. And the reason why is because we have findings that we're agreeing with or not 
And sometimes those findings, it seems to me, may relate to the prior approval, but perhaps have changed because now, you know, things are different. We have to look at all the findings. That, that's my viewpoint. Thank you. Um, so hopefully, I know somebody had asked if, if parking was or wasn't allowed on Bacardi. So hopefully that helps answer it. Bacardi is allowed for on-street parking, but the brewery is not allowed to have their patrons parking on there. Um, so please do, hopefully we can get that corrected. Um, but if not, if you do see that, please continue to report it. Madam Chair, can I please add to that the police department is probably not aware of specific conditions of every property's conditional use permit. So when they got a call that there was parking on Bacardi, they went out and visited and said, well, you can park on Bacardi. And I think from a staff standpoint, um, we would like to see the overflow parking constructed. And if that alleviates the, the parking on the street, that would be sufficient because I think um, making Bacardi completely no parking is not to the benefit of, of everyone and um, becomes a, a bigger enforcement issue. So if the problem can be solved with the overflow and maybe requiring the installation, which sounds like that's in process anyways, um, we can avoid the signage of no parking on Bacardi. Correct, thank you. Um, Julia, the other, one of the other questions that came up was on the zoning of this property. Yes. And there was a question on if it was agriculture, commercial, if you could address that. The property is zoned agricultural. Um, microbreweries are allowed within the agricultural zoning district. Um, so it, there was no need to rezone it to commercial. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was also some comments around landscaping. And I know, I don't recall exactly the <coughs> landscape requirements that this property had. Yeah. But if you can speak a little bit to the landscaping and also the landscaping that was required, we typically have size requirements. Yes, so it's six feet is the planting requirement for coniferous trees. And um, normally for the city, we look at the landscape plan on the site about a year after the original plannings. So since the site has not been open for a year, um, staff has not identified that, um, but once um, stat, that year does come and we do look at the landscaping and it does not meet what was approved, then we work with the applicant to get um, them to comply with what was approved with that original landscape plan. And if they were required to plant, and, I, and I'm making this up, so, so bear with me, I'm making up numbers. If they're required to plant 20 coniferous trees, mm -hmm. those would need to be six feet. They would need to comply with the six, or, or with, what the requirements are for comply the Comply with the requirements. Yes. And if they apply if they planted additional, then they could plant smaller additional trees. So if they planted yes. the required 20 trees that met the requirements, they could plant another 10, 20, however many trees they wanted in addition to that at yes. whatever size they wanted. Correct. So it is, I, I don't know for sure, but I until the city does their review, yes. um, we won't know. And the city does require a landscape surty for that yes. to ensure that the landscaping is met Correct. Or has recourse to mm -hmm. fix it. Yeah. Okay. And that review is this summer then? Is that roughly, roughly around late summer is about that year mark. Okay. So Okay, so that'll be reviewed late summer. Um okay, let me see what else I there the other um piece the traffic study. I know what I vaguely recall conversations on the traffic study, but um, I know there was some delays with COVID and obviously the facility has only been open just under a year. So I'm not sure that um, what the city has done on the traffic study at this point. Uh, Madam Chair, prior to the, prior to the approval of it, uh, the city received a traffic analysis and that was more for um, understanding the number of trips anticipated to be generated by the use and if there would be, if the um, be sufficient capacity of Bacardi Avenue, which found that there would be. Um, with regards to a speed study, I, I don't recall what that would have been. Um, it's not something we typically do. Um, and I do know that there were likely some studies done as part of the Bacardi improvements further north, but I would have to uh, follow up with our engineering staff. Um, Met, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Commission, the other avenue that I would recommend that staff pursue as a part of that um, 
Uh, senior planner Nemchek is certainly correct, and that's how it would typically be done. There is a, a difference between a, a, a traffic study and an, a, a speed analysis. And I think what had previously been found is that Bacardi can handle traffic, but whether or not that traffic is being safe, is, is safe for that area is a different um, concern and question that we're hearing quite clearly this evening. There is a, an internal traffic safety committee um, that does meet that consists of our police department, public works, and, and others um, that would take up items uh, as they come forward as, as needed. I think this would be a very good one for them to have a, a discussion and recommendation on. Um, and that could lead in some of the other discussions that the Planning Commission is having tonight, whether it's enforcement or changing of parking along Bacardi or other um, increased uh, enforcement, monitoring, other things. I, I think that it is very clear from the residents that we've heard in the letters received that um, traffic and the types of traffic are concerning in that area. And, and safety, so would that also then address maybe potentially speed limit? I know there was a recommendation of potentially lowering the speed limit. Is that something that that committee would also? The, the city does frequently receive requests for whether it's uh, changes in, in speeds along various roads throughout town, other types of improvements that uh, residents are, are seeking for their specific neighborhoods or other areas of town where they're maybe not feeling as, as safe as they should. So it, I wouldn't want to necessarily limit the options um, that could be recommended or provided right. by the committee, but I would suggest that um, staff take that on internally to their traffic safety committee to have that, that discussion. Okay. And so, so this, that can be done? Mm -hmm. You can do that? Perfect. Thank you. Um, I don't know. There was a, a question on the depth of the well, and I don't know that anybody here knows the answer on that. M Madam Chair, the well is permitted by Dakota County. Um, it does get uh, surveyed by the county every few years with samples collected and it's visited on an annual basis to identify any potential issues. And Anthony, my memory might be bad here. Um, it's been a few years since we initially reviewed this, but I, I vaguely recall there being conversations on the well and if it could, the water and all that could handle this use. Am I recalling that correctly? Yeah, there was some discussion there's about been that. And there's and been review. Staff report included information about the permitting process. Um, I do know the applicant does have holding tanks that get pumped uh, versus, uh, you know, a, a traditional septic okay. like you would find in a residential um, site. Uh, but I, you know, that's kind of outside our purview. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other one that I heard a couple of times that I've got down here is the dust. And I know that there are, that we do have mitigations for some of that on the roads. It obviously isn't necessarily just from this use, but just the dust on that road in general. And obviously the increased traffic can create more of that. Has there been discussions on what if anything needs to be done on that. I'm unsure what the Public Works Department does for uh, treatment of our um, gravel roads. I do know that they treat them. I don't know if it's all of them or specific ones, um, but that's something that we can certainly bring up to them. Um, that would be concern. good because maybe this, they haven't maybe changed their, their treatment of this road since the increase in traffic. Um, So I, th you know, if anyone, any commissioners have questions or comments while I go th back through the notes here to make sure I've captured most of the stuff that came up, please feel free to jump in. Yes, well, I'll, I'll comment a little bit since I was here when it first came through and um, I was one of the commissioners who voted it down. Um, we did get a number of conditions added that I thought were important, but it, it wasn't enough for me and I voted it down. And because I, I, for a lot of the same reasons that have been stated, I think. The traffic in that area and the speed. I mean, there's school buses there. I drive my used to drive my kids to school that way. Anyway, so there's, there's just a lot of reasons that I I, I was opposed to it at the time. Um, it's it was a beautiful facility and it's a beautiful concept. Um, I just don't think right there in that area is the right place. Um, I'll say that you know I, I looking at the the. Um, uh, the requests in front of us, I guess I wouldn't be too concerned about the food trucks. I don't hear seeing that being a big issue. But the other, you know, the hours of service and the, if, if, if assuming it was outdoor music, I would, I would say no. So, I mean, since it's a hole here, I, my, my vote would be no on this um, request. I'll add some comments too. I was here as well. <clears throat> and it was, you know, a 
a larger crowd at that time, I do recall. Um, the good news is it sounds like Mr. Schmitz has been a very good neighbor. I have not heard any negativity about his, his personal self or his business, and it sounds like it's very successful because it's always busy, which is, I think, an added thing for um, Rosemont to have for the community. Um, I would have to say, just listening to the folks tonight, um, you know, speed study, traffic study, noise study, buffers needed. Um, it is 50 miles per hour on that road, and as it gets busier, which, again, is a sign of success because it's busier, um, maybe that is something that needs to be looked at as well as far as the speed, and that's through the city. Um, it didn't even, you know, come across that Mr. Smitch, what, am I saying it right, Schmitz, Smith. Um, that he was, you know, very adamant about any of these conditions as far as coming here, you know, people have recommended it, so I thought I'd bring it, you know, before the commission to just kind of gauge the interest. So it doesn't sound like, you know, at this point, that it's you know too detrimental to his business if he doesn't get the food trucks and the music inside and um, the increase in hours at this point. And to be fair, it has not been open a year yet. So Joe, I did listen to you. Um, I just in my my recommendation would be let's let's let the business go for a while longer. Let's take care of some of these questions or concerns that have been brought up tonight and maybe reevaluate down the road, but the business is good. It's running well, um, be a good neighbor to each other, it sounds like, and that would be my recommendation is to not have these, uh, have the conditional use permit um, changed at this time. Thank you, Commissioner Reeds and Commissioner Rivera. I'm gonna jump back in with a couple other things that I wanna make sure we cover from the public comments. Um, Julie, if you can just cover, I know there was, there was one gentleman that referenced he didn't know anything about this previously until 10 days before city council. So I just think it's helpful to reiterate what our public notice process is, if you can, and the properties that we notice. Yeah, uh, public notices are sent out 10 days prior to meetings. Um, for agricultural, it is 1,320 feet that it's sent out to neighbors. So... Um, you know, they were notified, neighbors within that purview were notified okay. for um, plan, the planning commission meeting regarding this item. Thank you. And there was one um, individual who spoke about, there was um, impact, to, she believed impact to her well water as a result of the brewery. What is the process? I don't want to answer that here because I think it requires more information and dialogue, but what is the process for that resident to reach out to the city to discuss that? Madam Chair, we can um, put our Public Works Department in, in contact with, with that individual. Okay, so reaching out to the Public Works Department mm -hmm. would be the right avenue. Thank you. Um, also, if when you work with the, the committee on the traffic and the roads, there was some mention of the curves at 120th, so I'm not sure if they'll watch, if they or some of them will watch the recording from this evening, but making sure we call out those curves as well as a um, something to look at for a safety concern, that would be great. Um, and then, the Julia, the, we talked about parking and then noise, I believe, is the same way. If there is a concern with noise, yep. residents should call the police department. Yep. So we have it filed as a, as a on record, record so that we can address it and then do something correct as a result yes okay so that is the proper avenue to go about whether that's noise because this passes or doesn't pass whether it's noise for music or not music that that is something that um, should be should be addressed and then also I know there was some comment about violation of the hours from the conditional use permit so and whether that occurred or not um, I, I don't know, but if there is that belief, is the proper avenue for, for residents to address that with the planning committee, to let the planning department know? Madam, Madam Chair, I would also suggest that, that those complaints be logged through the police department. Okay. Um, this is a similar circumstance to what we often hear and discuss as planning commission with our um, mining permits. 
Um, it's, it's a way for the planning commission as they look through their annual review process, uh, renewal process to review if there's been um, an excessive number of complaints. Oftentimes it take place off hours, um, okay. that, that type of thing. So okay. that'd be our suggestion. So if there is, if the hours are being violated or the per, any violation of the permit to contact the police for the record. Correct. Thank you. Okay, I think I have covered the topics that I noted during public hearing. Um, are there other questions or comments from the commission? Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Baird. Just want to voice that I feel like there's um, like a, a misunderstanding of the applicant's intent and priorities, right? When we came in, we were thinking like live music and food trucks, and I think a lot of people were thinking like this festival atmosphere. Um, and what I'm really hearing is that the biggest priority is like a flexibility in hours to be able to allow um, for some flexibility around seasons uh, when people are out of school when there's holidays and really not being able to stay open later, although that seemed like that would be helpful. What I heard was that really being able to open earlier seemed like a priority to draw people in uh, during the warmer months. So um, I, a lot of the concerns I heard were around like the, the noise and like a lot of valid complaints, but I didn't hear anybody voice against um, opening earlier. So I know that like there's a lot of things before us, but like that's kind of the, the main priority that I was hearing from the applicant. I also, I feel like just from an atmosphere perspective, the live music that that Dave explained um, and wanting to be able to, to be able to talk to people there, I feel like the the live music, while it's indoors, it's my understanding that it that it still would be considered outdoors if the garage doors were open. So, if we wanted to move forward on something like that, could be the live music is played from inside even though the doors may be open and be audible on the patio if the conditional use permit would state that the the musicians need to be indoors yeah the commission can can change what is in front of you in regards to how you'd want to word potentially that okay. 17 condition instead of completely getting rid of it okay yeah. madam but, chair the specific request from the applicant was for um, live music and when staff followed up to ask if the live music would be outdoors or indoors he said the majority of the music would be indoors although they've had requests from you just musicians to play on the back patio with the garage doors open so that's the request staff received yep. madam chair if I could further add as a part of that um, what the Commission is is tasked with you know you have a number of options before you this evening um, like kind of a whole world of options actually so you know what uh, to Hopefully try to distill those options down a, a little bit to reflect some of the comments we've heard in, in dialogue we've received here. So what staff has prepared the report on is based on the applicant's request based on their existing conditional use permit. So in the staff memo that Julie has run through and provided here, we showed kind of a, a track changes or a, you know, a struck and then an addition component to it. Um, to kind of track what we're discussing here, our recommendations, that's the easiest way to kind of discuss that. Mm -hmm. Um, and whether it's the intent of the applicant, which you know, I think that's been a lot of the discussion is intent and assumptions, and we also have to make sure that we're planning for whatever is incorporated into a permit which runs with their land, can live on in perpetuity to whether it's um, the current owners or potentially successors down the road. Um, if there are issues down the road, we wanna make sure that, that everybody, the business included, is empowered to review the document as it lives and is approved ultimately by this, the, the city council to enforce, provide, or provide additional flexibility. So while we can certainly implore some um, creativity in how we rewrite components of this, just kind of keep in mind that we're, we're looking at this for the long term, but we're also um, working on the language as it exists within this uh, existing conditional use permit. And I think that's maybe one of my largest concerns is the fact that it lives on with perpetuity. Um, I, we've heard from Dave and his intent, um, or from David and his intent, and I believe those are truly his intents, but the fact that if this is sold and another owner comes in, then their intent might not be to do just the guitar, acoustic guitar on the back patio. However, at that point, it also is subject to the noise ordinance. Mm -hmm. So Correct. then immediately, if they bring in a five-piece band, it's gonna be subject to the noise <coughs> ordinance and get shut down right away because it's gonna um, most likely be in conflict of the noise ordinance that's allowed. Correct. So, yeah, I'm trying to keep both of those 
things in, in my head anyways as I, as I review this. And Madam Chair, and my understanding is that's where that condition number 17 originated from instead of having it be a reactive enforcement action by the city just to include it as a condition of approval within their um, permit as 17 outlines, just the outright restriction on it. So that's one way to look at that, that that topic is through a restrictive action outlined within their permit versus uh, crafting additional or more expansive language that could provide some parameters on it. Madam Chair. Yes. I have a couple questions and I would like to make some comments as well. We heard about the capacity. Um, I heard a number of, uh, 100 seats, and it sounded to me like someone was saying there were 100 seats on the patio. Is, is, did I hear that correctly? Because I'm, I'm looking at the staff report here, and it says the interior seating capacity was expected to be 89 with an additional 23 in the patio. So what is the actual capacity of this use? Anybody? Dave, as the applicant, I know our public hearing is closed, but we would appreciate your your ability to answer that question, if you can. The he said 100 when he was asked. Yeah, 100 is what we have. 100, I don't know where the 23 Okay, so the outdoor patio currently has 100 seats then, and then 89 interior, okay. okay. So I would think, and you know, that'd be something that staff should look at and, and iron out. The other question I have is related to the wildlife preserve. Just for clarification, what, what is the zoning for that parcel, that preserve? Um, agricultural? It's agricultural, I believe. I'm, okay. I can pull it up here, Commissioner. It may take me a minute. It, it is agricultural. Okay, so to me, that would, that would mean that well, it's non-commercial, non-industrial. If that provision applies, which I believe it does, that says no amplified music can be heard, uh, audible from a non-commercial, non-industrial zone, then if it's heard in that wildlife preserve, right on that property line, seems to me like it would be in violation. Um, that's more of a comment, I guess. But I do have some other comments, and, and I echo some of the things I've heard here, too. I have trouble with some of the findings as written. I don't think uh, I, as with a straight face, can, can uh, um, agree with those findings, because I don't think there's enough to really, to really show uh, the impacts of this use. Now, step back and say, I love the use. You know, <laughs> I, I love the place. I love breweries, all of that. And I wasn't here for the first approval. However, um, very sensitive to the concerns. I noticed the, uh, I, I recognized the noise issue sort of from my perspective from the start, just reviewing the report. Um, I wonder, is it futile to uh, approve this, recognizing that the noise standards and, and laws apply, but with the evidence we've heard, it seems to me like it's likely in violation of those noise standards. So we're almost leaving the residents to themselves to go fight it, you know, call the police. And is that fair to the residents and our law enforcement to, to deal with it? If we recognize that this may be an issue um, and this is down the road. So that's why when I heard things like a noise test and I thought the same thing, is there a noise study? You know, what kind of mitigation is in place to address these issues? I, that's sort of the common sense um, idea that came to my mind, and I heard it reiterated again. So I would agree that that should be a condition uh, that's attached to this if it were to be approved. Um, the, the, uh, I do think we would consider this as a whole um, it's, it's like an agreement. You amend an agreement, it's a new agreement. It's not two different agreements. You don't just look at the little language, you have a totally new agreement. This is an amended permit. So you don't just look at the, you know, let's look at this revision and this revision with blinders. You look at the entire permit, and that's why I do think it's open to discuss things like parking, uh, impose conditions if needed for that. I agree with the idea that 
the use has not been operating for even a year at this point. Haven't even seen it go through the whole summer. And um, it, it'd be a good idea, I think, to wait and see, um, you know, see how the use plays out for a year before making further changes. So I, I agree with that idea. Um, again, I like the use. Um, I don't know if I would have approved it, you know, originally or not, but I have to say I do like the use. However, I'm sensitive to, to what I'm hearing from the residents, and I recognize some problems uh, with the findings as written. So I, I won't be able to approve this this evening. Yes, Commissioner Powell. Madam Chair, uh, we have an approved COP conditions that they're asking to amend. It sounds like it hasn't even been verified that the original conditions of the COP have been met. In fact, I heard that there's a holding tank and not a septic system, which is condition number two. So I think it's really premature to consider changes when we haven't even verified that the original conditions have been met. And if changes are made, then all conditions are on the table. And we would need to look at all of them and addressing the concerns we've heard this evening. Well, Madam Chair, I want to clarify. I don't know the specific setup for their septic out there, but I do know that they've had pumping done for their excess stuff. Okay. Y yes, David. Thank you for clarifying that. So, so with that, I do think that they are probably in compliance of, of condition two. I can't conclude that they're in compliance with all the other conditions right. the way they're written, though. Right, I would agree. I mean, the condition eight refers to parking stalls clearly marked. It's a gravel parking area. I'm guessing that. I don't know how you mark parking stalls unless it's signage, and I don't know if you have signage out there to maximize the use of the parking area um, to avoid having vehicles parking on the roadway. I'm very surprised that that roadway is posted at 50 miles per hour, if that's the case. So that's certainly something that city staff should take a look at. Are there any other comments? Yes, I, I do. Um this is uh, specifically on the location of the brewery. Um, it is not County 42 and um, Cedar. It's not in a busy intersection. It is in a rural area. It's right next to a nature preserve. So I would almost capitalize on um, if, you know, for that business uh, to do well, I would capitalize on what you have because every brewery can have music, um, can have the noise, but this one is a little bit different. It has more of a nature setting around. Um, so, you know, have a little bit more of uh, thoughtfulness around the sound that it generates. And if there is a need for music to be in there, then possibly look for a more permanent barrier, um, maybe a, f a per more permanent fence or taller trees. Um, but I would almost capitalize on the location and have it integrate with nature and the views and what you have around. Um, and also educate your guests that are coming in um, to be sensitive to that and to park in the parking lot and not on the streets. Um, and the other issue is um, the speed itself. Um, obviously, you know, it's a brewery, and so, um, you know, it, it helps to address the speed issue and have speed bumps or stop signs or things to lower the speed limit in the area. Those are my two comments. Thank you. Any other comments? I will just share um, some of my comments. I, I do have concerns with all of the feedback that we heard from the residents today around noise and safety and, and such that I do appreciate staff's um, recommendation to take it forward to the the committee that can look at the road usage and the safety, the speed limit, um, and the parking. I, um, I would say it sounds like that live music and the food trucks were not as much of a priority as the hours. Um, 
I'm not necessarily, I'm not very opposed to the change in hours, in, um, especially being, I see the need to be able to be open earlier, like, you know, Friday, gorgeous afternoon, it would be nice to be able to go out at two, three o'clock and, um, and be there. So I think, in my opinion, I, I do see the hours um, as something that, that could be advantageous to the business and they're gonna operate, you know, when it makes sense, but I, I know he's not, they're not gonna be open the entire hours, but we don't wanna see them back here also every, every time they wanna change. So it's, I appreciate them coming forward and saying, here's, here's what we're looking for, um, not planning to be open all those hours right now, but we don't wanna come back every, every time or when there's a holiday, um, you know, Memorial Day, you know, not being able to open on Monday, Memorial Day till 4 p.m. Be nice to be able to open earlier. So I, um, I can respect that, and I don't have concerns with those. I do have concerns with some of the other pieces of the, the conditional use permit. However, in making sure that we've addressed those and that we are in compliance. So at this time, I am, I would not vote in favor of this at this time, but I, I do wanna just have it known that I'm not against the hours but I wanna make sure that we've got the rest of these, the things on this permit um, being addressed and being in compliance. So, uh, Julia, one, one thought I had, um, and Julia, Adam, um, please weigh in, is the potential to potentially look at continuing this to the next meeting and at such time ensure that that they are in compliance with the rest of these conditions and that we have some of these plans in place to move forward and then look at consideration. That is certainly an option, Madam Chair. So generally you have a, a couple of different avenues to go down. I think what you're suggesting is a continuance of it to seek additional feedback on existing conditions or to receive more, more data before making a, a, a motion to recommend denial or approval of their, their request. The other one would be to potentially bifurcate the um, requests. Um, we'll just kind of call it the, the hours and then the, the, the music slash food truck buckets there if there's consensus amongst the group for a, a, a recommendation either way on those. Another option would be to recommend denial of the requests as stated in the staff report. And then the other request would be to basically accept all, um, make a recommendation to approve as stated in there. There are other variations of those options in there, but that's probably the easiest way to distill those. I know I have voiced that I'm, I'm not opposed to the hours. I don't know if other people yeah, have so thoughts on them. Yes, Madam Chair, I, 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 I do not see approving um, any of the requests here other than I, I could see us doing an earlier time. I don't, I don't think opening earlier would be an issue. Later is a noise issue. I think the live music is a noise issue. I could see approving the food trucks. Those, those are kind of where I'm, where I'm sitting with this. So if, if we were to kind of come back and, and have a, a revised uh, CUP with allowing food trucks and maybe earlier hours, I, I, think, I think those are probably reasonable. And, and don't really um, um, cause the friction and issues that we're hearing from the residents. But I, I would not be, be approving the other, other pieces, the outdoor live music or later hours, certainly. Okay. I think obviously there are some impacts of increasing the hours, it does increase potentially some traffic and, and things on the road, but um, I am <clears throat> in potential noise. There is. There's impacts to, I think, even earlier hours, but I feel like, like it would be appropriate because the noise ordinance that we have in the city would still apply, and we have the traffic that's gonna be reviewed as well. So, any other thoughts or comments? Madam Chair, I think I'm in agreement with your comment on the hours. Um, I'm not in favor of the live music or the food trucks at this time, but I don't see the hours as, um, I see the hours as, a, as something that would be positive for the business and good for the community. And, and I feel the same way as well. Any other comments? Any other commissioners? Yeah, I mean, my concern is still, I think there are too many issues to resolve here. 
Um, particularly the safety issue resonated with me. I think even earlier hours, there might be some impacts there. And that's why I just think it'd be better to bring it back at some time uh, with some better facts in the record to support these findings to allow this amended CUP to go forward. I think I'm in agreement with Commissioner Whitman as well. I would not want to just kind of, I guess, piecemeal things together of what we're for, what we're against. I think it's kind of like it's ready to go or it's not, and I don't think it's ready to go at this time. And I think, again, I'm going to probably still stick to the point of it has not been open for even a year. So I would not probably be for any of this for this time period until we've had some more time under the belt of the business and the location and the issues here before I would consider voting in favor of it. I'm sure I agree with the last two comments uh, that I don't want to consider just one item of the existing uh, CUP and make a change to that until we get some feedback on all the issues that were mentioned this evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Um, with that, we've, as Adam laid out, we do have a couple avenues we can take this item um, this evening, and based on how those proceed, then that would take care of our, um, would dictate the action. So we could continue it for more information. We could um, make the motion that is before us and, um, and take a vote on that if it's something to recommend to city council or not, um, or a revised, um, make a revised motion to what is before us. Um, so I think with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something here. We'll see how the commission feels. I'm gonna make a motion to recommend the city council approve an amendment to the existing conditional use permit for North 20 Brewing located at 12296 Bacardi Avenue to extend the hours of operation subject to conditions. Um, one, which is the conformance of the conditional use permit. Um, it would not be subject to the food trucks or um, would not be subject to the food truck condition, but it would still, the noise requirement within the city code is still um, a condition that needs to be met. And I am going to propose in my motion that the hours of operation would be limited to Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 9. Sunday would be no change. It would continue to be 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Kenniger and seconded by Commissioner Reed. Riley, can I have you take roll call vote on this, please? Yeah. Um, we'll start from Paul and then. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, Powell. Commissioner Powell? No. Commissioner Whitman? No. Commissioner Rivera? No. Yay. Commissioner, Commissioner Reed? No. Commissioner Hammer? Yes. Commissioner Mike, or Commissioner DeGarrett? Yeah. Aye. Okay, the motion does not pass. It fails three to four. So with that, um, should I? Yep, go ahead. So uh, I'll make a motion to recommend the city council not approve an amendment to the existing conditional use permit for North 20 Brewing located at 12296 Bacardi Avenue to extend the hours of operation and to allow for outdoor, outdoor live music and food trucks on site subject to the conditions listed. I, I just wanna check on something once. I think typically we just don't have, like that motion that just failed would go to city council as a, that we are not so, recommending. Uh, Commissioner Chair, so, um, Madam Chair, so the, the first vote that the commission motioned, second in it, vote on failed. So you have a, a, a failed motion. So you're starting over, basically. So what I, I hear from Commissioner Reed is a motion on the floor, and staff would recommend that you motion in the affirmative. So instead of to not approve, um, if you would choose to amend your motion to deny the recommendations of the, um, the, the, the language that you put forth in there, that would be staff's recommendation. 
Well, didn't I just do that? Uh, you, you said to, to, <laughs> to, to not approve, they, deny. They want an affirmative, so, so yeah, deny. The recommendation okay. would be for city council to deny. deny. Got it. Okay, uh, so I'll do it again. I'll make a motion to rec recommend the city council deny uh, an amendment to the existing conditional use permit for North 20 Brewing located at 12296 Bacardi Avenue to extend the hours of operation and to allow for outdoor live music and food trucks on site uh, subject to the conditions listed. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Reed and seconded by Commissioner Powell. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This will proceed um, as well as our previous two agenda items this evening. I failed to state this at that time. This item will proceed on to City Council for their decision at the May 16th meeting. That concludes the um, North 20 item on the agenda this evening. The next item on our public hearing agenda is a request by Holiday Station Stores LLC for a conditional use permit to allow the expansion of the existing canopy and on-site improvements. Julia, I will turn this back over to you. Right, uh, so this request is a conditional use permit request to allow for the expansion and improvement of an existing non-service motor fuel station. Applicant is a Holiday Station, Holiday Station store um, and the site location is 15066 Chippendale Avenue. That's a little bit of a summary of the request. So the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow for the expansion of the existing canopy on site and also additional on site improvements at the existing Holiday Station store um, off of Chippendale Avenue. Um, so, a little bit of a um, background on it. So, the existing Holiday was built back in 1985, and at that time, conditional use permits were not required uh, for non service motor fuel stations. Um, with the requested expansion sla um, slash improvements to the site, the city is requiring the applicant obtain a conditional use permit. Um, so here's an aerial of the site, so you can see it's located south of County Road 42 and also located um, east of Chippendale Avenue. Um, so here's the existing conditions on site. So the area um, is about 1.1 acres in size and is currently zoned C4 General Commercial. Um, so you can see um, the existing canopy outlined here. There's a, six fuel dispensers under the existing canopy. Um, and also the existing convenience store. Um, the existing parking is located on the north portion of the site, um, and um, the access into the site is from Chippendale Avenue. Um, so the proposed expansion and the improvements you can see on this site plan. So um, the expansion is gonna be off the north end of the existing canopy to add three fuel dispensers and also add LED lighting to the canopy. So you can kind of see the existing one are these six that you can see with my cursor, and then they are expanding it to the north with these three dispensers. Um, they are also adding new underground tanks, which is gonna be on the south portion of this site. Um, a new dis um, diesel dispenser, which, which will also be in this location as well, to the south of the existing canopy. Um, new pump islands under the existing canopy. A new storage shed on the eastern portion of the site, south of the existing convenience store. And then also a new trash enclosure. Um, the parking will be moving north of the existing parking. Um, so you can see it's right here. So to allow for that additional dispensers, they are moving um, the parking a little bit further north. And then also here is um, the grading plan, but you can also see that they are adding burn, additional berm for landscaping to add as screening on the northern portion near 42. There is, since the site was built in 1985, there is, a dish, or there is existing, um, I'll show you in the aerial, there is existing um, landscaping on the eastern portion of the site and also on the western portion, um, which abuts up to Chippendale Avenue. Um, so there are 12 conditions of approval with non-service motor fuel stations. Um, you can find those findings within the staff report. Um, they were, um, all findings were approved with those 12 um, conditions. And the recommended action is a motion to recommend approval of the conditional use permit to allow for the expansion of the existing canopy and on-site improvements subject to conditions one through four. Um, did also want to mention in the staff report, um, did um, speak on the um, city well house um, north, of the, um, north of the site. And they are in process of getting a letter from the MPCA currently, and they will be submitting that once they receive that, um, as that was a condition of approval within the memo. 
Thank you, Julia. Yeah. Are there any comments or questions for Julia at this time? I have a question. When yeah. you are moving the parking stalls further yeah. up to allow for the expansion of the canopy, yeah. does that have any bearing whatsoever on the setback from County Road 42? Nope, they are within um, the required setback from their property line. Okay, that's my only question. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Powell. I had a question. Looks like they're making site modifications, grading, maybe some utility work, but I saw no engineering review of the proposed alterations to the site. Will that be part of the building permit issuance? Yes. Or, okay. Yes, that will be with the building permit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay. This item is a public hearing item this evening. So at this time, we will open up the public hearing. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item may do so at this time, coming to the podium, stating your name and address for the record. Move the public hearing be closed. Thank you. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Powell, seconded by Commissioner Kenniger to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. As we get ready to move into a motion on this, I am personally very excited to see getting three additional gas pumps at Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will help with some of the backup that we have between Holiday and Quick Trip and, and the gas pump availability in town. I agree. Motion to recommend approval of the conditional use permit to allow for the ex expansion of the existing canopy and on-site improvements subject to the following conditions, numbers one through four. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Reed, seconded by Commissioner Powell. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And even more exciting that they were able to stay within their setbacks and mm -hmm. all of that to make it work. That concludes our public hearing section this evening on our agenda. The next section of the agenda is the discussion. Is there any discussion items for tonight's agenda? Um, any new business? There's none. There's none. Okay, so I will just do a quick schedule reminder. Our next upcoming meetings, May, June, and July, May 23rd, June 27th, and July 25th. Um, as always, if you have a conflict with any of those dates, please let Riley know as soon as possible so we can ensure we have quorum and everything far before the meeting date. And with that, I will adjourn our meeting. Meeting adjourned.